You might not have noticed, but we cover an awful lot of different video games on this channel. Over the years, we've ranked entire franchises, applauded critical darlings, and publicly shamed those that let themselves down. Bloody hell, look at him go. What we've never done, however, is curate a list of the games that are, in our humble opinion, nothing short of brilliant. It's about time that we resolve that issue. For this gargantuan list, we gathered everyone at Team Triple Jump, be they presenter, writer, editor, or phraser, and asked them this simple question. What games would you recommend absolutely everyone should play at least once? Now, to be clear, this is not a list of the best games ever, according to us or Metacritic. That's not what should play necessarily means. Nor are we actually ranking these entries. So the game featured in the top spot is not necessarily any better than the game at number 101. Instead, this list is just our way of chronicling 101 fantastic titles that will always have a place in our hearts. The only thing we've stipulated is that they must be available on either current generation hardware or the previous one, i.e. any console released since 2012 or on PC. After all, it wouldn't be very cool of us to recommend games that are near impossible to get a hold of. We will be including remasters and remakes under that umbrella as long as they're worth playing in their own right. If you don't see one of your all-time favourites listed here, it's likely that they're only available to play via an emulator. And trust us, we're just as sad about it as you are. Let's get to the entries, shall we? I'm Ben. I'm Peter. And I'm Ashton from Triple Jump, and here are the 101 video games everyone should play at least once. Number 101. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt 2015 if you're the sort of person who enjoys things like Merlin, The Lord of the Rings, or Game of Thrones, you know, before the bad times, then you'd probably enjoy any of the three main Witcher games. Most people would agree, however, that The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is the most enjoyable, and what's more, you don't even need to have played the other two to enjoy it. The Witcher 3 follows Geralt of Rivia as he tries to track down his daughter Ciri, a young woman adopted via the law of surprise, all while facing off against various ghouls, goblins, and monsties, and navigating affairs of the heart with the many women in his life. Scoundrel. CD Projekt's masterpiece was lauded by both critics and players for everything from its storytelling and well-developed characters to its stunning art direction and sound design. If all of that sounds like your cup of tea, then The Witcher 3 can be played in its original state on current and previous-gen PlayStation and Xbox consoles, as well as on the Nintendo Switch and PC. Plus, CD Projekt are hard at work optimizing the game for the current generation, and the upgrade, which will be free for anyone who owns the game on PS4 or Xbox One, is set to be released sometime in 2022. Number 100. Bioshock 2007 For those of you who are channel regulars, it won't come as much of a surprise that we've included Bioshock among our favourite games of all time. We've made no secret over the years of the fact that we think it's an outstanding game. It isn't without good reason, though, as the 2007 first-person shooter has an awful lot of things going for it. Set in the underwater city of Rapture, the game follows Jack as he attempts to escape the isolated dystopia, all while doing his best to avoid the psychotic, genetically enhanced splicers and hulking big daddies. Through the use of the Adam mechanic, no, not that one, players are able to effectively give Jack superpowers, allowing him to set enemies on fire, electrocute them, and much more with just the flick of his wrist. Bioshock is a triumph from start to finish, immersing players in a stunning world full of terrifying characters from the second their bathysphere descends into the ocean. Though the original was released during the seventh console generation, a remaster is available to play on more modern machines as part of Bioshock the Collection. So. Would you kindly give it a go if you haven't already? Number 99. World of Warcraft 2004 We couldn't possibly curate a list of the games that everyone should try at least once without talking about the world's biggest MMORPG, or massively multiplayer online role-playing game, if you want to get reasons to shoehorn in an appearance from Simon Miller about this. World of Warcraft players start out by choosing a realm to play in, which each boasts different features, then head into the all-important character creator. Once there, they can choose their race and class, as well as making the biggest decision of all. Do they side with the Alliance or the Horde? After that, well, the world of Warcraft is your oyster, really. 
Naturally, there are more quests than you can shake a stick at, that level 1 character is going to need levelling up, and being an MMO, there's heavy emphasis on playing with other people. Our advice is to go out into the world of Warcraft, meet some new friends, plunder some dungeons together, and laugh about all the good times you had when you make it back to the local tavern. World of Warcraft is exclusive to PC and does cost players about a tenner per month, but if you feel like trying it, you can play up to level 20 without having to shell out a single penny. Number 98. The Last of Us, 2013. It's probably fair to say that zombie games have been done to death, no pun intended, so it really takes something special to stand out from the shambling horde. Perhaps the reason The Last of Us is a favourite of so many gamers is that it isn't really a zombie game at heart, but rather is a story of human struggle with a post-apocalyptic setting. Developed by Naughty Dog and released in 2013, The Last of Us tells the story of Joel, a man tasked with smuggling teenage girl Ellie into Salt Lake City. Infected with the virus but showing no symptoms, Ellie may be the only chance humanity has to find a cure. Not only is the story incredible, but every character in the game feels like a real person. The relationship between Joel and Ellie in particular captured the hearts of our audiences and was made all the more touching by the award-winning voice performances of Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson. The Last of Us is a PlayStation exclusive, so if you don't own a Sony machine then you're missing out on a fantastic game. PlayStation owners, however, can pick up a remastered copy of The Last of Us for both PS4 and PS5. Number 97. Mass Effect 2 2010 We toyed with the idea of putting all of the first three Mass Effect games on this list, but although the trilogy as a whole is excellent, Mass Effect 2 stands head and shoulders above the rest. Assuming the role of Commander Shepard, it's up to the player to assemble a motley crew of allies and prevent the insectoid collectors from wiping out all life in the galaxy. What's great about Mass Effect 2 is that it took all of the things that made its predecessor so great, i.e. the world building, storytelling and the cast of well developed characters, and made the experience better by virtue of various quality of life gameplay tweaks. BioWare made improvements to the inventory, scrapped weapon overheating in favour of ammo, and integrated the Paragon Renegade system into the actual gameplay. Though Mass Effect 2 simplified some of the first game's RPG elements in order to focus more on the shooter experience, this ultimately benefited the title, keeping the game moving and making the combat more satisfying. Although Mass Effect 2 is easily the best game of the series, we do recommend playing Mass Effect and Mass Effect 3 as well. Luckily, a remaster of the trilogy was released in 2021, so anyone interested in Commander Shepard's exploits can experience them on current and previous generation in glorious high definition. We can't recommend you bother with Andromeda though. By comparison, it's utterly ploppers. Number 96. Borderlands 2 2012 are you the sort of person who likes bright colours, big guns, and hoarding more loot than your average dragon? Then oh boy, do I have a recommendation for you. Originally released in 2012, Borderlands 2 sees players taking on the role of a vault hunter, and they must ally themselves with the planet's many misfits and rogues in order to defeat the megalomaniacal and devilishly charismatic Handsome Jack. Borderlands 2 is an action-packed romp from start to finish, filled to the brim with slightly unhinged characters of dubious moral alignment and enough content to keep players entertained for weeks on end. The scores of ludicrous enemies provide an excellent way to blow off steam, and the game's unique art style makes players feel like they're shooting their way through an animated comic book. What's more, the procedurally generated loot system means that the game boasts literally millions of guns, so even the most trigger-happy among you will be satisfied by all the firepower that's on offer. A remastered version of Borderlands 2 is available to play on all good current and previous gen machines, and there's even a VR version if you're that way inclined. We also highly recommend picking up an edition that includes the DLC, as Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep is a must play for anyone with even a passing interest in tabletop role playing games. Number 95 Pokemon Yellow, 1998. We're casting our minds back to 1998 now to look at a game that captured the hearts and imaginations of millions of people all across the world. Perhaps one of the main reasons that Pokemon Yellow features among many people's top games of all time is that it really does have something for everyone. Younger players were excited by all of the cute critters, and more mature audiences had a great deal of fun exploring the many towns of the Kanto region and battling with their Pokemon to become a Pokemon master. The main difference between Yellow and 1996's Red and Blue is that the game is updated to more closely reflect the anime, so alongside being able to train their very own Pikachu, audiences got to meet characters like Jesse and James, who they wouldn't have in any other version. Though the game is now well over 20 years old, Poke fans can still secure their very own Pikachu. In 2016, Nintendo re-released Pokemon Yellow for their 3DS Virtual Console service, retaining all of the old graphics and sound, but introducing wireless functionality that allows players to trade their Pokemon with their pals. 
It is worth noting, however, that the 3DS store is due to close in March of 2023, so if you're planning on catching them all, you'll need to get to it right away. Number 94. God of War 2018 Whilst curating the entries for this list, we so desperately wanted to include 2005's God of War alongside its 2018 reboot, but it is sadly only playable on the PlayStation 2 and 3. Consider this an honourable mention though, God of War 2005. We salute you. Unlike its predecessors, 2018's God of War eschewed the ancient Greek setting and instead explores Norse mythology. Set several years after the events of God of War 3, Kratos is now living in ancient Norway, has remarried and has a son named Atreus. Sadly, his new wife has passed away, and in order to fulfil her final wish, Kratos and Atreus must travel to the highest peak of the Nine Realms so that they can scatter her ashes. God of War enjoyed a huge amount of success upon its release, pleasing both players and critics with its rich lore and engaging narrative, its action-packed gameplay, and the charming depiction of Kratos and Atreus' relationship. If you fancy taking up your axe and joining Kratos and Atreus on their epic journey, then you can do so on PlayStation 4 and 5. God of War was also ported to PC in 2022, so even if you don't have a Sony machine, you can still get a slice of the mythological action. Number 93. Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare 2007 not only would we like to commend Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare for being an all-round great game, but we must also applaud it for its willingness to try new things. After all, as the SAS say, who dares wins, and in a world where, at the time, you couldn't move more than five feet without tripping over a World War II shooter, Call of Duty 4 had the balls to do something different. The campaign takes place in 2011 and sees players thrust into the midst of a civil war in Russia and conflicts caused by a separatist group's coup d'etat in an unnamed Middle Eastern country. Taking on the roles of a US Marine Sergeant and a British SAS commando, players experience conflict all around the world. Unlike many other shooters, Modern Warfare keeps its gameplay nice and varied, so one minute you'll be heading into a fight, guns blazing, and the next you'll be sneaking around on a covert operation. Furthermore, the game story will have players on the edge of their seats from the moment they begin the campaign. And don't even get us started on the multiplayer, talk about a game changer. Originally released during the seventh generation of home consoles, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare was remastered in 2016, bringing all of the action and suspense to a brand new generation of gamers. Number 92. Outer Wilds 2019 there are many video games out there that feature a time loop mechanic in some sort of capacity, but few are quite as special as 2019's Outer Wilds. The premise is quite simple. In just 22 short minutes, the solar system will be wiped out by a supernova. Fortunately for our unnamed protagonist, though, they're caught in a time loop, so each time the universe explodes, they get to reset. By exploring the solar system and learning from previous loops, players can uncover information about a long-extinct alien race known as the Nomai, which will in turn lead them to the cause of the time loop. The player is left to find things for themselves rather than being spoon-fed by the game. That's all part of the charm of Outer Wilds, and it's incredibly satisfying as you find key pieces of the puzzle and everything starts to come together. Unsurprisingly, Outer Wilds was nominated for several accolades and won three British Academy Game Awards and a Golden Joystick. Though it originally launched on PC and Xbox One in May 2019, it has since been released on PS4 and can also be played on the current generation. Good news for Switch players as well, as a port is currently in the works. Number 91. Resident Evil 2002 Though it may not have been the first survival horror video game ever made, it's hard to deny the impact that Resident Evil had on the genre. Resident Evil was originally released in 1996, but was remade in 2002 with shiny new graphics and a whole load of additional content. The game sees special tactics and rescue service members Jill Valentine and Chris Redfield trapped inside the imposing Spencer Mansion alongside several of their colleagues and hordes of mindless zombies. After choosing to control either Chris or Jill, players must traverse the mansion and solve a series of puzzles in order to uncover the conspiracy that lies at the heart of the whole sorry tale. Though they are armed, both Chris and Jill have limited inventory space, which means that carrying enough reserves of ammo and health items is basically impossible, so players will often need to carefully choose whether to fight their adversaries or flee. Resident Evil is able to maintain a consistent level of challenge and a tense atmosphere throughout its entire runtime, so if you're in the mood for a good spooking that will also get that grey matter flexing, then there's really no better choice. Though the Resident Evil remake was initially released on the GameCube, it has since been ported to a number of different consoles. These days, it can be downloaded on Xbox One and Series X slash S, PS4 and 5, Switch and PC. Number 90, Fallout 3, 2008. 
Before Fallout 3 was released in 2008, it had been a whole decade since the world had gotten to enjoy a major installment of the series. And oh boy, had things changed. In the ten years since Fallout 2, the franchise had been acquired by Bethesda, who got to work overhauling the series into something unrecognisable. Gone were the 2D isometric graphics and turn-based combat of its predecessors, not that we didn't like those as well, replaced with shiny new 3D graphics and the VATS combat system. Set 200 years after the Great War, players join a protagonist known only as the Lone Wanderer as they set out into the wasteland in search of their missing father. Despite its technical issues, Fallout 3 was a massively ambitious game that gave players a hugely interactive RPG experience. The combination of the barren setting with the minimalist sound design kept players immersed in the harsh post-apocalyptic world, whilst the VAT system helped to make the combat fun and engaging. Those looking to try their hand at surviving in the nuclear wasteland can do so on both current and previous generations, as well as PC, in order to be able to soak in all of that radiation. We don't recommend actually exposing yourself to radiation though, we, we gather it's not very good for your health. Number 89, Mega Man 2, 1988. Although Mega Man is now a gaming icon, his franchise got off to a bit of a shaky start. The OG Mega Man from 1987 was well received by critics, but because it didn't sell very well, particularly in the West, Capcom were reluctant to produce a sequel. They did eventually give Mega Man 2 the green light though, but it was on the proviso that the teams working on the game did so alongside other projects, and so the staff ended up developing the game in their own time. Their hard work and dedication paid off however, as the action platformer ended up being a huge success, impressing critics and selling a whopping 1.5 million copies worldwide. Mega Man 2 once again pits the titular hero against Dr. Wily, who following his defeat in the previous game has created a whole load of new robot masters in an attempt to best our little blue hero. Despite being over three decades old, Mega Man 2 is still available to play on pretty much every modern platform. Fans of the retro title can pick the game up as part of the Mega Man Legacy Collection, which bundles together the first six Mega Man titles for less than the cost of your average takeaway. And you don't even get diarrhea after playing it. Oh, <laughs> what a bargain. Number 88, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, 1992. We're sticking with the retro theme for a moment as we look back at yet another blue protagonist, only this time he's a real prickly character. <laughs> Unperturbed by his previous defeat at the hands of everyone's favourite spiny mammal, Dr. Robotnik returns in Sonic the Hedgehog 2 to try to achieve world domination once more. Yet again, he's after the Chaos Emeralds, and it's up to Sonic and his pal Tails to thwart this evil scheme. Following the success of Sonic the Hedgehog, players were champing at the bit to get hold of the sequel, and it did not disappoint. The levels were well designed and fun to play, the graphics were improved over its predecessor, and Sonic's new companion was well received by fans and critics alike. In fact, really the only fault anyone could find with Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was that it was a bit on the easy side. But let's face it, when a game is as fun to play as Sonic 2, that doesn't really matter. Sonic's second outing has been ported to more devices than we can shake a stick at, and believe us, we're basically pro stick shakers by this point, so fans won't be stuck for places to play the game. Currently, it's available on PC, Xbox One, and Series X slash S, 3DS, and Nintendo Switch, and also on PlayStation 4 and 5 as part of the Sonic Origins Remaster compilation. So go at it, you little blue blur lovers. Number 87, Near Automata, 2017. With most of us being northerners here at Team Triple Jump, when we purchase a video game, we like to know we're getting our money's worth. So replayability is absolutely a consideration when it comes to picking up a new title. With that said, there's replayability, and then there's Near Automata, a game that simply has to be played several times to be fully appreciated. 
Nia Automata is set in the year 11,945 AD, in the midst of a war between human-made androids and a machine army from another world. Players take on the roles of several of the androids, and on each different playthrough, they'll explore different facets of Nia Automata's story. Aside from its rich, complex narrative, players were impressed with the game's artful blending of the action and RPG genres, its beautiful presentation of a futuristic dystopia, and its fun hack and slash combat mechanics. Nier Automata was originally released for the PS4 and PC, but was ported to Xbox One in 2018, and can now be downloaded on PS5, Xbox Series X-S, and Nintendo Switch. Which is good news all round, really. Spot for choice. Number 86, Hollow Knight, 2017. One of the great things about the rise of crowdfunding sites is that creators who would have previously struggled to get their projects out into the world are now able to do so with the help of backers willing to invest a few quid. In recent years, crowdfunding campaigns have given birth to a number of excellent indie titles, and one of our personal favourites is 2017's Hollow Knight. An action-adventure title of the Metroidvania persuasion, Hollow Knight was unleashed upon the world following a successful Kickstarter campaign set up by developer and publisher Team Cherry. The game's protagonist is the titular knight, who must uncover the truth behind the infection, which drove the citizens of Hollow Nest to madness and turned them undead. Fair warning, Hollow Knight is challenging. Some players have gone as far as to liken its difficulty to games like Dark Souls, but while there certainly is a steep learning curve, it's absolutely worth it to experience the atmospheric setting, compelling narrative, and stunning visuals. If you're up for a challenge, Hollow Knight can be found on both the current generation and previous one, and regardless of which platform you choose, you are in for a fantastic, if slightly tough, time. Number 85, Undertale, 2015. If you don't know anything about it, you could be forgiven for thinking that Undertale is nothing more than just another indie RPG. This could not be further from the truth, though, as behind the simplistic art style is a game with an awful lot of heart. Undertale tells the story of a small child who has fallen through a magic barrier into the underground, a place beneath the surface of the Earth that's full of monsties. By either fighting or pacifying said monsties, the player must ensure that the child is able to make their way home. The game has received praise from both critics and players for everything from its story and characters to its combat and music. What's perhaps most impressive, however, is that all of this greatness was achieved by the efforts of one man, Toby Fox, who developed the game, published it, and even wrote the soundtrack. Golly, he must get up very early in the morning. Undertale was originally released for the PC in 2015, but has since made its way to PlayStation and Xbox. Do you prefer your Undertale experience on the move, perhaps? Well, that's fine, because you can also play it on the PlayStation Vita and Nintendo Switch. Number 84, Batman Arkham Asylum, 2009. Like most popular superheroes, Batman has starred in more than his fair share of video games over the years, but though many of them have been great, the title that stands head and shoulders above the rest is Rocksteady's Batman Arkham Asylum. The 2009 title follows everyone's favourite moody orphan billionaire, that's the titular Batman, as he traverses the titular Arkham Asylum and attempts to thwart the non-titular Joker's madcap schemes. On this occasion, the Joker has trapped Batman in the asylum with a bunch of mad supervillains that can't stand the sight of him, planted bombs around the city, and threatened Gotham with annihilation should anyone attempt to set foot on Arkham Island. Not only is Arkham Asylum the best Batman title in our writer's opinion, but it's often cited by critics as being the best superhero game ever made. There's little doubt of this, down to its stunning visuals, well-written story, satisfying combat and stealth, and outstanding voice performances from the likes of Kevin Conroy, Arlene Sorkin, and Mark Hamill. If you're desperate to squeeze your buttocks into tight latex and kick some bad guy bottom, number one, you're a bit of a saucy minx, aren't you? And number two, you can play the remastered version of Arkham Asylum on Xbox One, Series X S, PS4 and 5, and PC. Or you can actually don a latex suit and just go fight crime. We won't judge you. Number 83, Deadly Premonition, 2010. 
There have been a number of games over the years that have been inspired by David Lynch's wacky murder mystery Twin Peaks, but if we have to pick a favourite, it would undoubtedly be Deadly Premonition. Released in 2010, Deadly Premonition puts players into the shoes of FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. The game takes place in the fictional town of Greenvale, and it's up to players to get to the bottom of a young woman's murder. To say that Deadly Premonition divided critics is an understatement. In fact, it holds the Guinness World Record for being the most critically divisive survival horror game ever made. Some outlets bashed everything from its controls to its voice acting, whereas others praised it for just how weird it is. Now, don't get us wrong, we know that Deadly Premonition isn't a game that everyone is going to enjoy, because it's it is, for want of a better word, bat plops insane, but it is definitely a title that everyone should experience at least once, if only to decide how bat plops insane it really is. Though the game can be played on the PC, its port is notoriously bad, so we can't recommend you bother with Deadly Premonition the Director's Cut. Deadly Premonition Origins, on the other hand, is a decent port, and can be found exclusively on the Nintendo Switch. You can also find the original 360 version on the Microsoft Store for those interested in playing on the Xbox. Number 82, Super Mario 64, 1996. What? You didn't think we'd make a list of 101 games everyone should play without giving at least one shout out to the world's most iconic plumber, did you? What do you take us for? There was some debate down at Triple Jump Towers over which Mario games to include in our definitive 101. Spoiler alert, this isn't the last time you'll see the mustachioed megastar on this list. The title that came up again and again, however, was the 1996 Nintendo 64 classic Super Mario 64. The title saw Mario make the leap into 3D for the very first time as he set out to save his beloved Princess Peach from the perennial menace Bowser. In order to rescue the damsel in distress, players need to platform their way around Peach's castle, collecting power stars as they go. Some are just out in the open, whilst others require Mario to beat a boss, solve a puzzle, or race an opponent. Critics were hugely impressed by Super Mario 64, praising the beautiful 3D world, the diversity of the gameplay, and just how fun it was overall. So, feel like stepping up to the plate to save the princess yourself? Well, luckily for you, Super Mario 64 is still available on the Wii U and as part of the N64 lineup for the Nintendo Switch Online Plus expansion pack, which gives players access to a number of classic titles, <laughs> including Number 81, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. 1998. I'm uh, pretty pleased with that segue, not gonna lie. Another Nintendo series that provoked much argument in the office was The Legend of Zelda, and as much as we'd like to have included the entire Zelda back catalogue, you know, except for those horrid Philips CDI efforts, we must show some restraint. There was no doubt in anyone's mind, however, that regardless of which combination of titles we went with, Ocarina of Time would be amongst them. The fifth game in the Legend of Zelda series sees our boy Link travelling through time to reverse the evil that has been brought upon the world of Hyrule by Big Bad Ganondorf. Throughout the game, players can use the titular wind instrument to play different melodies, each of which helps Link to solve a variety of puzzles and brings him one step closer to banishing Ganondorf's evil from the world. According to review aggregator Metacritic, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is the best game ever made, boasting a frankly staggering near-perfect average score of 99 out of 100. As we've already mentioned, Zelda fans seeking the nostalgia of Ocarina of Time can find the game bundled in with the Switch Online Plus expansion pack, and it can also be found on the Wii U and 3DS. Number 80, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, 2003. Over the years, there have been more Star Wars games than you can shake a lightsaber at. There's one, however, that tops the list of pretty much everyone here at Team Triple Jump, as well as, spoiler alert, our every Star Wars game ranked list. And that was Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Set some 4,000 years before the formation of the Galactic Empire, KOTOR is an RPG in which players get to create their very own Force user and take on the Sith Lord Darth Malak. Regardless of whether or not you're a Star Wars fan, though if you're not, Tiny Peter will fight you, KOTOR has something for everyone. The game's story is perfectly in keeping with the rest of the franchise, while still being accessible for those who don't even know a Wookiee from a Wampa. 
Additionally, the RPG elements and combat are meaty enough for hardcore gamers, but not so much that they turn off newer players. The original game can be played on Xbox One, Xbox Series S and X, Switch and PC. Before you Sony fans go getting all upset though, it's worth remembering that a remake is currently in the works and it's set to release as a PS5 and PC timed exclusive. Though how similar it will be to the original, we can't say. We're good, but we're not that good. Number 79, Uncharted 2 Among Thieves, 2009. If you've ever wondered what it would be like to go out into the world and search for old-timey artefacts, but like our writer, you're a massive introvert who would rather die than do anything outdoorsy, then you probably quite like the Uncharted series. All of the games are pretty good, but there are two that we'd recommend above all else. Uncharted 2 Among Thieves, and another we'll get to in a short while. Cheeky chappy Nathan Drake returns in Uncharted 2, only this time, he's on the hunt for the Sintamani Stone and the city of Shambhala. Upon its release, Uncharted 2 was universally critically acclaimed, with both reviewers and players praising the game for its visual design, narrative excellence, and the portrayal of Nathan Drake by a little-known voice actor, Nolan North. He's not been in much, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't even know who he is. Uncharted 2 was originally released as a PlayStation 3 exclusive, so you're going to need to invest in a Sony machine in order to experience the adventure. Fortunately, there's no need to trawl through eBay to find a decent quality PS3, as the game has been remastered and now can be played on both PS4 and PS5. Number 78, Halo Combat Evolved, 2001. When Microsoft launched the original Xbox all the way back in 2001, they needed an exclusive that would ensure the console made its mark on the video game landscape, and oh boy did Halo Combat Evolved help them do just that. The game is set in the 26th century, by which time faster than light space travel has allowed humans to hop around the universe, colonising planets besides Earth. Old habits die hard, I guess. Players jump into the fancy green armour of Master Chief, a super soldier tasked with uncovering the secrets of the ring world, Halo. Naturally, there are other beings interested in the structure as well, and sadly, they're not all friendly E.T. sorts. Halo Combat Evolved won numerous Game of the Year awards, holds a staggering average of 97 out of 100 on Metacritic, and is often credited with modernising the FPS genre. The Halo series is a Microsoft exclusive, so anyone looking to join Master Chief on his quest to defeat the Covenant will need either a current or previous gen Xbox or a PC. The game is available as part of the Master Chief collection, which also includes Halos 2, 3, ODST, Reach and 4, which is is, in our opinion at least, a darn good deal. Number 77, Portal, 2007. If we could choose to make one piece of video game technology real, it would undoubtedly be the portal gun. Think of the possibilities. You could get a beer out of the fridge without ever having to leave the sofa, cut your commute down to a fraction of the time, commit that crime you've always wanted to do and flee the scene immediately. Ooh, that took a dark turn. Sadly, science doesn't seem particularly fussed about turning my dreams into reality, and so I must make do with playing Portal for the several hundredth time. This fantastic puzzler was first released as part of the orange box, and though Half-Life 2 Episode 2 was the headline act, Portal turned out to be a surprisingly good supporting player. It was like getting to the bottom of an ice cream sundae and finding a really fudgy chocolate brownie. Yum yum. By traversing a series of test chambers using only the provided portal gun, a device that fires a pair of interconnected portals, protagonist Chell must escape the Aperture Science Test Facility. The puzzles start out simple enough, but quickly become more and more tricky as the player progresses. Think you can best the chambers and escape the facility? If so, then Portal Still Alive is available to play on Xbox One and Series X S. Switch players can also get a slice of the action, and of course, the cake, thanks to the Portal Companion Collection, and PC players can still find the original on Steam. Number 76, Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, 2006. Though Todd Howard seems to have forgotten there are other Elder Scrolls games in existence besides Skyrim, we have not. 
and it's our hearty recommendation that anyone who loves a bit of sword and sorcery has a go at Oblivion. And let's face it, who doesn't love a bit of sword and sorcery? Oblivion takes place within Cyrodiil, and sees the protagonist doing their darndest to thwart the plans of a fanatical cult who intends to open a portal to a demonic realm, and unleash whatever nasties lie within. The game transports players to a meticulously crafted world where they're free to do, more or less, as they please. Obviously, the main questline should probably be tackled at some point, but Oblivion never railroads players into doing it, and they're empowered to play the RPG however they see fit save an artist trapped in his own painting, lay a ghostly watchman to rest, or busy yourself finding a load of Nern root for Sundarian. Tamriel really is your oyster. It's bad news once again for PlayStation stands, I'm afraid, as Oblivion is currently only available to play on Xbox One, Xbox Series X slash S, and PC. You never know though, once Bethesda have finished porting Skyrim to every electronic device in the known universe, they might give it a current gen remaster. I wouldn't hold your breath though. Number 75, Half-Life 2, 2004. If you like puzzles, guns, and hunky, bespectable, sexy boys, then we've got a game that ticks all of those boxes and many, many more. Set roughly 20 years after the first game in the series, which incidentally is also really rather good, Half-Life 2 sees Gordon Freeman awakened from stasis to find that the Combine, a multi-dimension empire, has conquered Earth by biologically assimilating its inhabitants. Guess who's been left to clean up this big mess? Why Gordon has, of course! Half-Life 2 is part first-person shooter, part physics puzzler, so players will need to use their brains and their brawn if they've any hopes of avoiding all those nasty headcrabs. Don't worry though, Gordon, we heard you can get a special shampoo for them. Though the game got perfect scores more or less across the board, it particularly drew praise for its graphics and physics, which at the time were very impressive, and in fairness, still hold up alongside titles of today. Although Half-Life 2 has previously seen releases on both Xbox and PlayStation consoles, these days it's only available on PC. The good news though is that PC players can still pick up the orange box, which not only includes Half-Life 2 and Episodes 1 and 2, but also comes with both Portal and Team Fortress 2, a bargain at twice the price. Number 74, Dead Space, 2008. They say that in space, no one can hear you scream, but when you're playing Dead Space, people will definitely hear your shrieks of terror for miles around. The game follows protagonist Isaac Clarke as he navigates a spaceship Ishimura in the hopes of finding out what happened to his girlfriend, who was the ship's senior medical officer. Not only does he have various alien nasties to deal with, but he must also battle with the escalating psychosis in his own mind. Though it bears a science fiction setting, Dead Space drew heavily from survival horror games like Resident Evil and Silent Hill, sending players into the claustrophobic Ishimura and pitting them against the hostile necromorphs with limited supplies. Put simply, Dead Space is truly scary. Through its setting, gameplay, mechanics, sound, and overall design, the game is able to cultivate an insanely tense atmosphere that lingers throughout its entire runtime. Both Dead Space and its sequel Dead Space 2 are worth a look if you're fond of sci-fi horror. The franchise's third entry is fine, though thanks to a hefty amount of interference on EA's part, it eschews horror in favour of action. If you've got a pair of brown trousers that you're just aching to put to good use, then you can get your fright fix on the Xbox Series X slash S and Xbox One via backwards compatibility or on PC. Number 73, Limbo, 2010. We're going to caveat this entry with a bit of a warning. Limbo is a very good game, but it's one to avoid if you're already feeling a bit depressed or anxious. Definitely play it at least once in your life, but save it for a day when you're emotionally ready. We don't want to be responsible for any severe existential crises. In terms of its narrative and art style, Limbo is very simplistic. The game follows a young boy as he travels through a forest on the edge of hell in order to find his sister. Beyond that, however, it's down to the player to interpret the plot in whichever way they see fit. Is the boy simply looking for his sister, or is there a deeper meaning to it all? On the surface, Limbo may not look like much, but it packs an awful lot of atmosphere and engaging gameplay into its short runtime, pitting players against challenging puzzles and terrifying enemies. These days, Limbo can be found on pretty much all current generation platforms, so regardless of whether you're on Team Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, or PC, then you too can enjoy the many feelings of existential dread brought on by the game. And enjoy it, you've earned them. Number 72, Grand Theft Auto V, 2013. 
Do you like doing crimes but find that prison takes up way too much of your time? Then you need some Grand Theft Auto in your life! We did toy with the idea of sticking GTA 4 on this list. Although it is a solid game, it does lose a number of marks for having your annoying cousin Roman call you every five minutes to invite you to bowling. GTA 5 not only lacks the irritating relatives that let its predecessor down, but it also has three multidimensional protagonists that truly bring its story to life. Throughout the game, players jump into the shoes of Michael DeSanta, Franklin Clinton and Trevor Phillips, a trio of criminals of various flavours, whose lives intertwine thanks to their numerous illegal exploits. Grand Theft Auto V currently sits at a whopping 97 out of 100 on Metacritic, with reviews praising its multi-protagonist formula, its gameplay and the design of its sprawling open world. It would probably be quicker to list all the places you can't play Grand Theft Auto V, since by this point the game has been released for three different generations of consoles. For the sake of clarity, however, we're happy to confirm that it's available on both Xbox Series and Xbox One, PS4 and 5, and PC. Number 71, Crash Bandicoot 3, Warped, 1998. We couldn't possibly make a list of our most highly recommended games without giving a nod to everyone's favourite wise-cracking marsupial. Taking place shortly after the events of the second game in the series, Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped, or simply Crash Bandicoot Warped if you want to get less European about this, follows Crash and his younger sister Coco as they attempt to thwart the latest evil plans of Dr. Neo Cortex. After Cortex's space station crash lands on Earth, unleashing the evil Uka Uka, Crash and Coco must travel through time in order to collect a whole bunch of powerful crystals before Cortex, Dr. Nefarious Tropy, and Uka Uka can get their hands on them. We chose Crash Bandicoot 3 over its predecessors as it took everything that they did and refined it. The graphics were cleaner and more detailed, the gameplay mechanics were improved and the sound design was top notch. Don't get us wrong, the series' first two games are also good, but Crash 3 is just the whole package. Though the original game was only released on the OG PlayStation, modern players can pick up the remake as part of the Insane trilogy for PS4 and 5, Xbox One and Series, Switch and PC. Number 70. Minecraft 2011 In most instances, if you were to play a game that had no plot, no objectives, and very little in the way of combat, you probably wouldn't have a very good time. If the game you're playing is Minecraft, however, it's easy to lose days and days of your life just mining enough diamonds to make yourself a gigantic diamond palace. Nobody told you to do it, and yet here you are, regardless. Creating your own fun by mining for materials and building things is the essence of Minecraft. Players are plopped into a blocky, procedurally generated world and left to explore at their own pace. Trees can be punched and turned into workbenches which then allow the player to make tools. From there they can obtain ore, make better tools and get to work on whatever they'd like. Build a house, farm some animals or just dig downwards to see how far the world goes. It really is all up to you. If you own an electronic device then it's likely that you can play Minecraft on it. The game is available on current and previous generation Xbox and PlayStation as well as on the Switch, Wii U and PC. Those favouring a portable experience can also find Minecraft on the PS Vita and the 3DS. Number 69. Nice! The Last of Us Part 2, 2020. We couldn't possibly recommend that everyone play The Last of Us without also recommending that they play The Last of Us Part 2 as well. Part 2 is set five years after the events of the first game, by which point Ellie and Joel have settled into a community of survivors in Jackson, Wyoming. It's not long before their peaceful life is disrupted, however, and Ellie must embark on a journey seeking justice and vengeance. The Last of Us Part 2 took what its predecessor did and built upon it. The result is a deep, emotional story, fantastic stealth and action gameplay, and stunning graphics and sound. The game also received universal acclaim for its voice performances, particularly those given by Ashley Johnson as Ellie and Laura Bailey as Abby, with the latter winning both a British Academy Game Award and a TGA for her efforts. Those keen to see what Joel and Ellie have been up to in the years since The Last of Us can find out by picking up a copy of The Last of Us Part 2 on PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5. Those playing on the current gen will get to enjoy an upgraded version that allows them to experience all the horrors in glorious 60 frames per second. Number 68. Detroit Become Human, 2018 
It's fair to say that David Cage is a divisive name in the gaming community. Some consider the man to be somewhat of an auteur, whereas others feel like he's all ideas and no substance, and also maybe a bit of a tyrant. Upon its release in 2018, Detroit Become Human divided critics. We highly recommend that you ignore the naysayers, though, as overall, it's a solid game that's well worth your time. Detroit Become Human is set in the not-too-distant future. Androids have replaced much of the human workforce, but for unexplained reasons, some begin behaving unusually. The story follows three androids, Kara, who escapes her owner, Marcus, who is working to free other androids from servitude, and Connor, who is hunting down the deviant androids. Critics praised Detroit Become Human's narrative and character development, as well as its handling of difficult topics such as slavery, identity, and what it means to be human. Although Detroit Become Human was a PlayStation exclusive when it launched in 2018, it has since been ported to PC, so there's no need to rush out to buy a PS5 if you'd like to play it. Not that you can rush out to buy a PS5, but even so, you know what I mean. Number 67. Halo Reach. 2010. Two Halos in one list? I hear you cry. Have you gone mad, Triple Jump? Nope. We haven't lost our minds, it's just that the good folks down at Bungie and Microsoft sure know their way around a first-person shooter. Oh, and spoiler alert. This won't be the last time you see a Halo game in this list either. Sorry, not sorry. First released in 2010, Halo Reach is a direct prequel to Halo Combat Evolved. Players take on the role of Noble Six, an elite super soldier and member of the Noble Team. The game follows the squad as they make their last stand against the Covenant on the planet Reach, the last line of defense before Earth. Some critics have gone as far as to call Halo Reach the best Halo game of all time, and it's very easy to see why. Players jumping into the game can expect a top-notch first-person shooter experience, visuals that are nothing short of breathtaking, a huge, engaging narrative, and a memorable cast of characters. The original was released for the Xbox 360, however modern gamers can get their hands on a remastered version of Halo Reach thanks to the Halo Master Chief Collection, which can be found on Xbox One, Xbox Series X S, and PC. Number 66. Spyro the Dragon, 1998. For many of us, Spyro the Dragon is so much more than just a video game from the 90s. He is the mascot of our childhoods. He was the reason we rushed home from school in the evening, why we always got up super early on a Saturday morning, and why our mums complained that we were always playing on the Nintendo. Damn it, mum, it's a PlayStation! Put simply, he is nostalgia given sassy purple reptile form. The first game in the series stars the eponymous dragon as he journeys across the Dragon Kingdom in order to defeat the dastardly Gnasty Gnork. On his way, he must free the rest of the dragons, each of whom Gnork has turned into a crystal. How rude. Unbelievable, this guy. Though Spyro the Dragon is aimed at children and therefore lacks the challenge of some of the other games on this list, it's still an awful lot of colourful fun to play. Each of the five homeworlds boasts a unique design and the wide variety of enemies on offer keeps the gameplay nice and interesting. The original Spyro was a PlayStation exclusive, but the little purple dragon's exploits can now be enjoyed in stunning high definition on most consoles thanks to the Spyro Reignited trilogy. The remake, which also includes Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage and Spyro Year of the Dragon, can be found on Xbox One and Series, PlayStation 4 and 5, Switch, and PC. Number 65. Yakuza 0, 2015. We're big fans of Yakuza here at Team Triple Jump, and if we could have put all eight of the series' main titles on this list, we would have. That wouldn't have been very fair to all the other great games out there, though, and so instead we've picked our favourite, Yakuza 0. For the record, you should definitely play the others as well, though. Released in 2015, Yakuza 0 is a prequel to the first game, set some 17 years before the events of the OG Yakuza. The game follows Kazuma Kiryu and Goro Majima as they become embroiled in a conflict between vicious Yakuza factions, each of whom seeks control of a patch of land called The Empty Lot. Though real estate negotiations might not sound like a particularly exciting premise for a game, you've got to remember that these guys are the Japanese Mafia and they tend to settle their arguments with guns and big pointy knives. Not only is Yakuza 0 incredibly accessible, taking place before the rest of the series, but it's also an awful lot of fun to play. The story is interesting, the combat harkens back to beat-em-ups of years past, and the whole thing is peppered with Yakuza's proprietary blend of weirdness. If any of that sounds like your cup of sake, you can find Yakuza 0 on Xbox One and Series, PlayStation 4 and 5, and PC. Number 64. Dark Souls, 2011. To say that Dark Souls is a game that everyone will fall in love with is a bit of a stretch, but it is definitely a title that everyone should play at least once in their lives. The combat is incredibly punishing, but try not to let that put you off, because beyond that, there's a world of rich lore that's just begging to be explored. 
players start by creating their own character before heading out into the kingdom of Lordran. By speaking to NPCs, collecting items, and just generally exploring, players will uncover the history of the world and work out how they can influence its future. Players and critics alike praised Dark Souls for its dark fantasy setting, its deep gameplay, and its level of challenge, which many felt provided a massive sense of accomplishment. Besting an enemy that's taken a few tries to finally kill really does feel good. It was even named the ultimate game of all time at the 2021 Golden Joystick Awards, beating the likes of Minecraft, Half-Life 2, and Doom to the punch. Feeling up for the challenge? You can play the remastered version of Dark Souls on most modern consoles, including the Xbox One and Series, PS4 and 5, and Nintendo Switch. And fret not PC players, because Dark Souls Remastered is also available on PC, and thankfully, it's a lot better than that shoddy PC port that was released in 2012. We do not speak of the shoddy port. Number 63. Spider-Man 2018 If Batman Arkham Asylum is considered by many to be the best superhero game ever made, then surely 2018 Spider-Man is a close second. After all, whilst it's great to explore your dark past, play around with cool bat gadgets and hallucinate your bat nips off, it's an absolute blast to swing around New York City like you don't have a care in the world apart from overdue rent. Pay it, Peter. Pay it. Though it draws from Marvel Comics and other media adaptations of the property, Spider-Man tells a completely new story. Supervillain Mr. Negative is looking to seize control of New York's criminal underworld and threatens to unleash a deadly virus upon the city. It's up to Spider-Man to put a stop to his dastardly schemes, all whilst keeping on top of Peter Parker's many problems. Have you paid the bills yet, Peter? Peter, have you paid your bills yet, Peter? Even if you're not a massive fan of superheroes, we can almost guarantee you'll enjoy Spider-Man. The story is engaging, the combat is fast-paced, and the combination of an open world and the web-swinging mechanic makes for a gosh darn good time. If you're desperate for your Spidey fix, then you'll need to dust off that PlayStation 4 or 5, because 2018 Spider-Man is a console exclusive, my dude. Can't get enough of that Peter Parker? Well, the good news is that a sequel is in development, and the plan is that he'll be back in 2023. Number 62. Time Splitters 2. 2002. We'd like to take a moment, if we may, to remember our fallen comrade, Time Splitters. We enjoyed your company very much whilst you were on PS2 and GameCube, but it seems that you were not long for this world. You may be gone, but you shall never be forgotten. Thankfully, the original Time Splitters is the only game in the series to be lost to time, as both Time Splitters 2 and Time Splitters Future Perfect can be played on the current generation. The first sequel is our fave, though, hence its spot on this list. Time Splitters 2 consists of 10 different levels, throughout which players must attempt to stop the evil Time Splitters from ruining history. In order to do so, they must collect crystals in different time periods, from the Old West all the way through to the 25th century. Upon its release, Time Splitters 2 received universal acclaim, and though its graphics are starting to look a little dated, the gameplay still holds up incredibly well. We recommend getting a couple of friends round to play split screen for the nostalgia hit. Though Time Splitters 2 was originally available on all three major consoles of the generation, it is now unavailable on modern PlayStation and Nintendo machines. Fortunately, backwards compatibility has come to the rescue once again, and so you can relive those heady days of playing Time Splitters 2 on the Xbox One and Series X slash S. Hooray! Pull your finger out, Nintendo and PlayStation. Number 61. Ghost of Tsushima 2020 if you're looking for a trip back in time that's full of action, suspense, and a little bit of swordplay, then you might just get a kick out of Ghost of Tsushima. Set in the year 1274, Ghost of Tsushima follows protagonist Jin Sakai as he attempts to protect the island of Tsushima from the invading Mongol fleet, led by the ruthless Khotan Khan. Unable to defeat the invaders through traditional samurai tactics, Jin travels throughout the land to recruit allies and must learn guerrilla warfare if he has any hopes of achieving victory against the Mongols. The game features a stunning open world that players are free to explore. Though the story and gameplay are both brilliant, it's the environment that really makes Ghost of Tsushima something special. The entire world has been meticulously designed, resulting in a stunning landscape that is truly breathtaking to behold. Ghost of Tsushima was originally released in 2020 for the PS4, and a director's cut has since been released on both the PS4 and PS5. If you don't own a PlayStation, then you're not going to completely miss out, as in 2021, a film adaptation of the game was announced by Sony Pictures. You will be pleased to know, however, that at the time of writing, Uwe Boll has nothing to do with it. Number 60. Pikmin 3 2013 
The Pikmin series has been around since the turn of the millennium, but the first game and its sequel are becoming harder and harder to play. Both are still available to download on the Wii U, but with the closure of the eShop looming, it won't be long until they become basically unplayable without some sort of emulator. Though both games are great, it's difficult for us to recommend titles that may not be readily available in a few months' time. All is not lost though, as Pikmin 3 is just as good as its predecessors and can be found on the current generation. Hooray! In Pikmin 3, players can cycle between characters who have been sent to the surface of the planet PNF404, which sounds like an error code, in order to find fruit seeds that will save their home planet from famine. Whilst there, they befriend the Pikmin, a species of small, insect-like creatures that aid them in their quest. Players can command the Pikmin to combat enemies, collect the spoils of war, and assist in solving the game's numerous puzzles. Pikmin 3 was first released in 2013 on the Wii U, but has since been ported to the Switch. The port features a brand new prologue and epilogue, different difficulty settings, co-op play in story mode, and brings back the Piklopedia from Pikmin 2. As if all of that weren't enough, it also includes all of the DLC from the Wii U version. You can of course still buy the game on the Wii U, at least until the eShop closes, but we'd recommend opting for the Switch edition as you get far more bang for your buck. Number 59, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe 2017. Ever since the release of Super Mario Kart in 1992, the Mario Kart series has been delighting fans of the racing genre with its ever-growing roster of familiar Nintendo characters, colorful tracks, and infuriating power-ups. 2014's entry into the franchise Mario Kart 8 takes all the best parts of its predecessors and wraps them up in a shiny package for modern consoles. 2017's Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, though, is the one to get, as it contains a number of gameplay tweaks and all of the DLC from the original. It boasts dozens of playable characters, with everyone from the main man Mario to The Legend of Zelda's Link getting in on the action, as well as 48 different tracks. If that's not enough to keep you occupied, though, then Nintendo announced in February 2022 that they'd be releasing an additional 48 tracks by the end of 2023. This brightly coloured, fast-paced racer is an absolute must for any occasion when you've got two or more people in a room. Even a funeral. No, not a funeral. It's simple enough for the kiddos to get on board with, but it's engaging enough to keep the adults entertained for hours on end as well. So gather your friends and challenge them to a few laps around Rainbow Road. All you'll need is a Nintendo Switch. And a copy of the game, of course. Whilst we can guarantee you'll have fun, unfortunately we can't guarantee there won't be any fallings out when you deploy that last minute blue shell and snatch victory from one of your mates. Maybe there will be a funeral today, after all. Number 58, Elden Ring 2022. We made absolutely no secret of how excited we were for the release of Elden Ring here at Team Triple Jump, and it's safe to say that it does not disappoint. We are still waiting for our promotional Elden Ring sword though, it must have just gotten lost in the post. Yeah, that'll be it. Players are transported to the realm of the Lands Between, where the titular Elden Ring has been shattered and its shards scattered amongst the demigod children of Queen Marika. Marika. I'll be honest, I've not actually played Elden Ring. According to this list, I must, but so far, I've refused. The player character is a tarnished, an exile summoned back following the shattering, and it's up to them to restore the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord. It's kind of like the Lord of the Rings, but, you know, backwards. They're, they're trying to fix the ring. That's weird. Like Dark Souls and Bloodborne before it, Elden Ring is a punishing game that rewards players who explore and investigate all that the world has to offer. Though the combat is tough, it isn't completely frustrating. By no means would we say that Elden Ring is suitable for complete novices, like me, but the open world exploration, various options for overcoming enemies, and fewer instances of boss runs might make it a little less daunting for those who might have been put off by FromSoft's previous titles. Are you ready to become the Elden Lord? Well, if so, you can grab a copy of Elden Ring on Xbox One and Series X slash S, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and PC. Oh, and one last piece of advice. Try fingers, but whole. You'll know what I mean when you get to it. Number 57, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, 2000. 
Skateboarding is a really hard sport to get the hang of, and as much as we tried our best to master the ollie as youngsters, our efforts usually just ended in painful ouchies. Developer Neversoft clearly recognized that there was a market for uncoordinated kiddos who wanted to feel the rush of skateboarding without the associated health risks, so they got in touch with the Birdman himself, and the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater series was born. The first game was great, but the sequel was better, taking everything that Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 did and building upon it with better graphics and the introduction of gameplay mechanics such as cash rewards and the ability for skaters to perform manuals. Plus, the soundtrack was banging from beginning to end. Obviously, we can't play any of it here or we'll make the YouTube overlords mad, but just imagine that this royalty-free interlude is Rage Against the Machine. The original Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 was released on pretty much every console that was on the market at the time, from the PlayStation through to the Game Boy Advance. These days though, even the PC version is impossible to come by, by non-questionable means at least. Luckily though, Vicarious Visions and Activision were gracious enough to bestow upon us a remake in 2020. The bundled Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 title can be found on Xbox One and Series, PS4 and 5, Nintendo Switch and PC, and it's a heck of a lot safer than trying to do that kickflip in real life. Number 56, Soul Calibur 2, 2002. It's time to throw some hands now as we cast our minds back to 2002 to look at Soul Calibur 2, the third installment in Project Soul and Namco's Soul Calibur series. The year is 1590 AD, and following an unsuccessful attempt by Nightmare to restore Soul Edge, the sword has shattered. Seeking to either destroy the sword or unite its many fragments, numerous warriors embark on a journey to find the pieces, while Nightmare himself sets about collecting souls so that he can restore Soul Edge once more and wield the power it possesses. Like most fighting games, Soul Calibur 2 pits players against a smorgasbord of different enemies and tasks them with giving them a good kicking, or punching, or whack with sword. That's sort of the USP of Soul Calibur. Most characters from the first game have returned in Soul Calibur 2, while several new ones have also been introduced. In addition to the multitudes of different playable characters, there are also a whole bunch of game modes for players to pick from. Play through the story in arcade mode, fight against the clock in time attack, or get a load of folks involved together with versus team battle. It's been 20 years since Soul Calibur 2 was released, meaning the original version is quite hard to come by these days. Luckily though, in 2013, it got a nice shiny HD remaster for the PS3 and Xbox 360, and as a result of the latter, modern gamers can now find it on the Xbox One and series via backwards compatibility. God bless you, Microsoft. Number 55, Red Dead Redemption 2, 2018. Before we get into what a great game Red Dead Redemption 2 is, we'd like to assure you that its inclusion in this list over its predecessor is not a slight against RDR1. Red Dead Redemption is a very good game and we do recommend you pick it up at some point, but in our opinion at least, Red Dead Redemption 2 is the one that you absolutely must play. The game is set in the year 1899, just as the Wild West is declining. This is bad news for Arthur Morgan, an outlaw and gang member who has made his way through life thus far by taking what isn't his and settling any arguments with a gun. Ooh. With their lifestyle threatened by the progression of society, ew, Arthur and the Vandalin gang decide that the only thing left to do is to try and get themselves enough money from one last heist to retire away from the watchful eyes of the law. Both critics and players alike were hugely impressed by the game's stunning and vast open world, its graphics, its gameplay, and its writing. Unlike many large games, which can begin to feel like elements have been recycled after playing for several hours, RDR2 doesn't become stale. Every environment is well crafted, every character is fleshed out, and the numerous side quests are varied and engaging. So what are you waiting for? Grab your cowboy hat and your six shooter, yeah that, that makes it sound like I know what I'm talking about, and get to doing what outlaws do best. You can find Red Dead Redemption 2 on Xbox One and Series, PS4 and 5, and PC, 
or you could be a dirty outlaw and steal it. No, no, don't do that. that, that that's bad. Number 54, Disco Elysium 2019. If you've ever played a tabletop role-playing game, you'll know that dice can be cruel. No matter how poorly they treat you, though, you'll still find yourself going back to them week after week. It's like Stockholm Syndrome, but with lots and lots of pretty colours. Ah. If you find yourself wishing you could carry your love of math rocks into other aspects of your life, namely video games, then you might find that you really enjoy 2019's Disco Elysium. Players take on the role of Harry Dubois, a cop with a substance problem. The game begins with Harry awakening in a trashed hotel room. He has no memory of who he is or where he is, and all he knows is that he has a severe hangover and a serious lack of trousers. Upon emerging from his room, he learns he's been assigned to investigate the death of a man who'd been found hanged behind the building in which Harry is staying. Over the course of the game, players must explore the open world and interact with its inhabitants in order to unravel the mystery. Unlike traditional RPGs, Disco Elysium doesn't have a combat system. Instead, everything Harry does relies on skill checks. As in a number of tabletop RPGs, there are things that Harry is good at and things he's bad at, and much of his fate rests on the roll of a dice. So, if you're feeling lucky, uh, punk, then you can play detective by picking up a copy of Disco Elysium on Xbox One, Series, PS4, PS5, Switch, or PC. And may the odds be forever in your favor. Number 53, Perfect Dark 2000. We would have loved to have given a spot on this list to the Nintendo 64 classic GoldenEye 007. Sadly though, unless you happen to have an old N64 lying around, in which case you've probably played the game already, you're very much out of luck when it comes to playing it these days. Fortunately, we are able to recommend GoldenEye 007's spiritual successor, Perfect Dark, as that is still available to play on modern consoles. Yay! The game is set in the distant future of 2023, where humans are stuck in the middle of a conflict between two alien species, the pronunciation of which only James Jenkins could help me out with, and he's not around. The Mayans and the, the Skidar? Gonna go with that, okay. That's right, 2023, alien invasion. As though the past couple of years haven't been bad enough, we now have an intergalactic war to contend with. Sounds about right. Unsurprisingly, corporations such as Datadyne have found a way to exploit the war for profit, and it's down to Carrington Institute agent Joanna Dark to blow the whole conspiracy wide open. Upon its release, Perfect Dark received widespread praise for its graphics, its clever AI, and its gameplay. Most agreed that from a technical standpoint, it took everything that GoldenEye 007 did right and made it bigger and better. Though it lacked some of the innovation of its predecessor, it was still a triumph of video gaming. The original version of Perfect Dark was an N64 exclusive, but a remastered version was released for the Xbox 360 in 2010. It can be picked up these days, therefore, on the Xbox One and series either as a standalone title or as part of Rare Replay, which comes with the Perfect Dark remaster and 29 other games from developer Rare. Now that is an absolute bargain. Number 52, Metroid Prime 2002. Do you dream of jetting off into the galaxy to fight intergalactic nasties, but your fear of heights and your lack of astronomical know-how have thus far prevented you from doing so? Well, you can scratch that itch by simply booting up Metroid Prime. As with the rest of the series, Metroid Prime stars galactic bounty hunter Samus Aran. After intercepting a distress signal from the space pirate ship Orpheon, Aran is shocked to find that its entire crew have been slaughtered by the biological experiments the pirates had been working on. Someone's gonna have to clean up this sorry mess, and thankfully, Samus doesn't have any prior social engagements. Metroid Prime received universal critical acclaim upon its release, and was praised for how successfully it managed to modernize the franchise by bringing it into three dimensions while still retaining the series' essence. As it stands, Metroid Prime is currently only available to play as part of the Metroid Prime trilogy on the Wii U. As the Wii U eShop will be closing in March 2023, those looking to get a slice of the action will need to get to it sooner rather than later, as there's no telling whether Nintendo will re-release the game on more modern platforms. Metroid Prime 4 is in the works though, so maybe, just maybe, the first three games in the series will get some sort of revival. Fingers crossed, eh? 
Number 51, Resident Evil 4, 2005. If we'd have left it up to our writers, probably about 10% of this list would have been taken up by titles from the Resident Evil series. That wouldn't make for very interesting viewing, though, so we forced them to pick just two. They ultimately settled on Resident Evil, which we've already talked about, and Resident Evil 4. Good choice. It's been several years since the Raccoon City incident, and Leon S. Kennedy is now working for the US government. The president's daughter has been kidnapped by Los Illuminados, a psychotic cult whose leader intends to use the Las Plagas parasite to take over the world. If Leon's got any hope of rescuing the young lass, he's going to have to head right into the fray. Spain is quite nice this time of year though, so I'm sure it will be an absolute piece of cake. Unlike the series' previous titles, Resident Evil 4 takes more of an action-focused approach. The horror is definitely still there, and elements of its predecessors are still very much present. Did anyone order a green herb? No? Okay. But there's less of the survival horror that the franchise was known for. Players will still have to be careful with their ammo and health items as they're not exactly abundant, but there won't be that same internal struggle over whether or not to even fight an enemy full stop. So go right ahead and shoot that nasty chainsaw man right in his face, you floppy-haired Adonis, you. Resident Evil 4 was originally released on the GameCube, but these days can be found pretty much anywhere you can play video games. It's just like Skyrim. It's not like Skyrim. Number 50, Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain, 2015. Whoa, we're halfway there. Whoa, time for Metal Gear. There's a whole bunch of Metal Gear games that we would have liked to put on this list, and we have to give a special shout out to Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty, a game that was, until late 2021, available to play on a number of modern platforms. Sadly, due to licensing issues, the Metal Gear Solid HD collection has been pulled from digital storefronts, and there's no indication of when, if ever, it might return. As upsetting as this news is though, at least we still have Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. Though there was an awful lot going on between Hideo Kojima and Konami throughout the development of Metal Gear Solid 5, it still ended up being a great game. Set almost a decade prior to the original Metal Gear, The Phantom Pain tells a story of punished Venom Snake, who is on a quest for vengeance after his men were murdered at the end of Ground Zeroes. Upon its release, The Phantom Pain received universal critical acclaim. Both audiences and professional reviewers alike lauded the open world and the freedom given to players. They also praised the performances of the voice cast, which included the likes of Troy Baker and Mr. 24 himself, Keith Sutherland. Hideo Kojima's final Metal Gear game was originally released on the PS3 and 4, Xbox 360 and 1, and PC, and is now also available on Xbox Series X and S, and PS5. Number 49, Kirby's Adventure, 1993. Ever since he first appeared in 1992's Kirby's Dreamland, Nintendo's spherical pink protagonist has been a favourite of fans the world over. Whilst the debut of Kirby was an awful lot of fun, his second outing, Kirby's Adventure, is considered by most to be the superior title. We join Kirby as he attempts to track down the pieces of the Star Rod that's been dismantled by King DDD. Kirby believes that DDD has stolen the rod for evil purposes and sets out to rebuild it so that it can once again power the Fountain of Dreams. Kirby's Adventure is not only an incredibly cutesy experience for anyone who plays it, but it is also the first time that Kirby is granted his now famous copy ability, through which he can absorb the powers of those he meets. Or rather, those he eats. Players agreed that the addition of the mechanic was part of the reason they enjoyed Kirby's Adventure a whole lot more than Kirby's Dreamland. Though it was originally released for the NES all the way back in 1993, an emulated version of Kirby's Adventure is available for modern players as long as they own a Nintendo Switch, Wii U, or 3DS. As mentioned previously though, the Wii U and 3DS eShops are closing soon, so unless you plan on snagging the title via the Switch NES app, bye now, thank me later. Number 48, Tetris Effect Connected, 2020. We feel like by this point, there are very few people out there who haven't played Tetris at some point in their lives. The simple yet addictive puzzle game burst onto the scene in 1984 and has been ported to almost every electronic device with a screen in the years since. 
If you're unfamiliar with Tetris, and if that's the case, then welcome to Civilization. I assume you're new here. The premise is rather straightforward. Players start with an empty grid, which slowly fills the geometric shapes, or tetrominoes if you want to get technical about this, that fall from the top of the screen. The idea is to move the shapes so they stack together neatly. If you manage to fill up a row, it will disappear, freeing up space for more blocks. Filling a row grants points, and when a certain number of points are accrued, you get to move up a level. There have been dozens of versions of Tetris released over the years, both licensed and not, and the game has appeared on everything from the Commodore 64 to graphics calculators. A great version to pick up these days is Tetris Effect Connected, which puts a modern twist on the classic title, retaining the core gameplay mechanics but bringing everything into the 21st century with outstanding visuals, an updated soundtrack and additional game modes. If you're in the mood for a bit of blocky fun, then Tetris Effect Connected can be found on the Xbox One and Series, PS4 and 5, Nintendo Switch and PC. Number 47, Final Fantasy VII, 1997. In 1987, Square Enix released a game for the NES titled Final Fantasy. Just a year later, however, audiences found that they had been lied to as it transpired that the title was not, in fact, the Final Fantasy, but one of many. Where do the lies end, Squeenix? Where do they end? Obviously, I jest, and over the years, the Final Fantasy series has gone from strength to strength, earning itself millions upon millions of fans all around the world. Most agree, though, that the franchise's seventh entry is the best of the lot. Players jump into the shoes of the Buster Sword wearing Cloud Strife as he joins the eco terrorist group Avalanche and attempts to prevent the evil Shinra Corporation from draining the planet of its life essence, which they intend to use as an energy source. He and his allies must also face the psychotic and narcissistic Sephiroth, a former member of Shinra who seeks to destroy the world. Thanks to its wonderfully rich and engaging story, its stunning world design and its cast of instantly lovable characters, Final Fantasy VII is considered by many to be amongst the greatest games of all time. A remake of the first part of Final Fantasy VII was released in 2020, and Part II, also known as Final Fantasy Rebirth, was confirmed for release in Winter 2023. Those unwilling to wait for the remake can enjoy the entirety of the original on most modern machines, including Xbox One, Series X slash S, PS4, PS4, PS5, Nintendo Switch, and, of course, PC. Number 46, Hitman Blood Money, 2006. Although the Hitman series has been regularly churning out titles since the year 2000, it wasn't until 2006 that the franchise gave us a game that was worthy of consideration for a list such as this one. Don't get us wrong, the first three Hitman games were perfectly serviceable stealth titles, but none of them hold a candle to Hitman Blood Money. The assassin, Agent 47, makes his triumphant return in Blood Money, and this time he's taking on the franchise, a rival contract killing organisation that threatens his employers, and and seeks to get their grubby hands on the same cloning technology that created 47. Though its advertisements generated some controversy due to its depictions of various murder victims, the actual game was incredibly well received. Perhaps most notably, Blood Money gained an awful lot of praise for the variety of options that each level gave to players, meaning that not only was there plenty of choice when it came to the method of killing the targets, but there was also scope for replayability. Think you've got what it takes to make it as a master assassin? The original version of the game can be found on PC, and if you fancy seeing those sweet, sweet kills in stunning high definition, you can pick up the Hitman HD Enhanced Collection, which comes with both Blood Money and Hitman Absolution, on the Xbox One and Series, and the PlayStation 4 and 5. Number 45, Unpacking, 2021. If I were to tell you that a game that simulates unpacking boxes following a house move was an absolute must play, you'd probably think I'd lost my mind. That's exactly what 2021's unpacking is though, and far from being a snooze fest, the whole experience is thoroughly entertaining. The game begins in a child's bedroom and players must open the cardboard boxes and find a place for everything. Some items can only go in certain places, so you have to think carefully before putting everything away. The game is not just an unpacking simulator, however. It tells a wonderful story, albeit incredibly subtly. There is no dialogue and very little in the way of text, so players have to infer what's happened in the protagonist's life through the items they take with them and the places they move to, and it's hugely exciting to be part of their biggest milestones. Unpacking can be finished in a single afternoon, though the achievement system, which consists of adorable stickers, gives players the opportunity to replay the game time and time again. 
Players will come for the retro art style, soothing soundtrack and cathartic gameplay, but will stay for the plot, even if it's only to find out what happens to the little pink pig plushie. If you're feeling like a bit of organisation can cure what ails you, then unpacking can be found on Xbox One and Series, Switch and PC. Number 44, Devil May Cry, 2001. Here's a fun fact for you. Did you know that Capcom originally conceived Devil May Cry as Resident Evil 4, and so it ended up becoming a brand new IP instead? See? You can't say we never teach you anything on this channel. Based very, very loosely on the epic poem The Divine Comedy, Devil May Cry is focused on demon hunter Dante, named after Dante Alighieri, who wrote the aforementioned ode to wandering through the afterlife. After meeting a woman named Trish, Dante embarks on a quest to destroy the demon lord, Mundus, the nasty boy responsible for the deaths of Dante's brother and mother. At the time of its release, Devil May Cry received a great deal of praise for its innovative gameplay and visuals, and though both may seem a little quaint by today's standards, Devil May Cry is still worth your time. Dante himself is a very likeable protagonist, and the game's gothic stylings are sure to resonate with anyone who had a bit of an emo phase growing up. And let's face it, most of us did. Reckon you're ready to take on the legions of hell? You can pick up a remastered version of Devil May Cry, along with its first two sequels, as part of the Devil May Cry HD collection, available on Xbox One and Series, PlayStation 4 and 5, Switch and PC. Number 43, What Remains of Edith Finch, 2017. Over the years, we video game fans have become accustomed to titles that pack in tons of action, so it can be a little strange when a game comes along that encourages players to take their time to carefully explore their surroundings. We'd like to assure you though, that although What Remains of Edith Finch has been described by some as a walking simulator, such a description is neither a slight, nor is it entirely accurate and the title is very much worth spending a couple of hours on. The aim of what remains of Edith Finch is to explore the Finch family's abandoned home and piece together a number of events that take place between 1937 and the present day. They are all connected to a central theme, the family's belief that they are cursed and doomed to die young. Upon its release in 2017, What Remains of Edith Finch received critical acclaim, with audiences giving particular praise to its gut-wrenching yet enchanting story. Players won't find any high-speed car chases or adrenaline fueled gunfights, but what they will get from What Remains of Edith Finch is a touching and emotional experience that will keep them glued to their screens for the entirety of its runtime. Want to know exactly what does remain of Edith Finch? You can find out on Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4 and 5, Switch and PC. Number 42, The Walking Dead, 2012. Prior to the studio's closure in 2018, Telltale Games were famed for creating brilliant episodic story-based adventures based on some of the world's most popular franchises. Their takes on Game of Thrones, Batman and Borderlands are all excellent examples of the studio's work, but it's 2012's The Walking Dead that came out as a favourite for most of us here at Team Triple Jump. We have nothing against Telltale's other The Walking Dead titles, but in our opinion, Season 1 is the best of the bunch. Players take on the role of Lee, a man who is on his way to jail when the zombie outbreak occurs. He soon finds Clementine, a little girl that's been hiding in a treehouse after being left with the babysitter. The pair form an unlikely partnership and must do what they can to outlast not only the hordes of walkers, but numerous hostile survivors as well. The game weaves a number of very human stories against a horror backdrop, and players can expect to make an awful lot of difficult choices throughout The Walking Dead. It's worth bearing in mind though that while there are a lot of heartbreaking moments, there are also a great deal of heartwarming ones as well. If you think you could survive the zombie apocalypse, then you can find The Walking Dead the complete first season on Xbox One, Series X and S, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Switch and, of course, PC. Number 41, Journey, 2012. Journey's a small town game. They're very quickly short to fame. Back when it was first released in March 2012. Become some guy in robes. Sometimes he walks, sometimes he floats. He's got to get to the mountain way over there. That's quite enough of that. If we had to sum up 2012's journey in just one word, that word would probably be awe-inspiring. Actually, I'd better check with one of the writers if that's two words. Philip, is awe-inspiring one word or two? He says it's hyphenated, so I think we're fine. 
As one might assume from the title, the game sees players embarking on a journey, one which has them making their way towards a distant mountain. Along the way, you may meet other players who can assist you, but neither of you can communicate with each other except through physical actions and signals. Despite this, it's very easy to become attached to those you meet, even though you never exchange a single word and won't know each other's names until the credits roll. Both the PS3 and PS4 versions of the game earned themselves a very respectable 92 out of 100 on Metacritic, and Journey received accolades for everything from its art direction to its music and sound design. Those looking to embark on this awe-inspiring adventure can pick up Journey on PlayStation 4 and 5, and if you don't happen to own either of those, then you'll be pleased to know that Journey was also released on PC in 2019. Number 40. Life is Strange, 2015 Do you like making choices? Do you like making lots of choices? Do you like making lots of choices that could have life or death consequences? Then, oh boy, do I have a recommendation for you. Life is Strange centers on Max, a teenage girl who discovers that she has the power to rewind time. As the game progresses, Max is placed into a number of situations in which she can use her power to alter the outcome. As an example, at the beginning of the game, she sees her friend Chloe get shot in a bathroom, but is able to rewind time in order to prevent it from happening. She's also faced with several choices throughout the game that can affect how the story pans out. Choosing to do something like comforting an upset student may seem trivial, but it can have massive consequences further down the line. Upon its release in 2015, Life is Strange wowed critics and audiences with its captivating story, multi-dimensional characters, and gameplay mechanics. What was perhaps most impressive, though, was that the game presented players with choices that mattered, even if the outcome wasn't clear until much later in the game. If you're up for a spot of time manipulation, then you can pick up the original version of Life is Strange on Xbox One and Series, PS4 and 5, and PC. Or, if you'd prefer slightly shinier graphics, you can also grab a copy of the remastered version on all of the aforementioned platforms and the Nintendo Switch. Number 39. Final Fantasy X, 2001 if Final Fantasy VII is our absolute favourite of Square Enix's epic RPG series, then Final Fantasy X comes in at a very close second. For the series' tenth numbered outing, players are transported to the world of Spira and set out on a quest to defeat the rampaging monster Sin. The game's protagonist is the Blitzball star Tidus, who becomes embroiled in the whole affair when Sin destroys his home city. Alongside several other playable characters, he must find a way to stop Sin before it's too late. Not only were players treated to an epic tale of good versus evil, but they also got to enjoy a fully voice-acted Final Fantasy title for the first time ever, with James Arnold Taylor, Tara Strong, and John DiMaggio lending their legendary talents to the English dub. Final Fantasy X also received a great deal of praise for refining a number of gameplay mechanics that had, in previous games, been a little on the clunky side. In particular, the updated combat system and the ability to switch out characters mid-battle were called out as welcome additions to the game. Despite being over 20 years old, you can still snag a copy of Final Fantasy X, albeit a remastered version, on most current and previous-gen consoles. The game is available on Xbox One, Series X slash S, PS4 and 5, Switch, PC, and even the PlayStation Vita. Number 38. Celeste, 2018. Mental health problems are something that many of us struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis, and though some days may be a walk in the park, others feel like you're trying to scale a mountain. These are exactly the feelings that game developer Maddie Thorson wanted to convey when she created Celeste. The game tells the story of Madeline, a young woman who attempts to climb the fictional Mount Celeste all while struggling with her own demons. Madeline's fight to overcome the mountain, which is both literal and allegorical for her depression and anxiety, is representative of the battles with mental health and gender identity that Thorson was facing in her own life, and one that will resonate with many players. In terms of gameplay, Celeste is a platformer, and so players must run, jump, climb, and air dash through levels in order to guide Madeline to the summit. Players can also find collectibles as they progress, including strawberries, which can affect the game's ending, cassette tapes that unlock harder versions of each level, and crystal hearts that can be used to access additional content. Celeste can be found pretty much anywhere you prefer to play video games, so regardless of whether you're Team PlayStation, Nintendo, Xbox, or PC, you can help yourself to a slice of the mountain climbing action. Before you rush out to buy a copy, though, just remember that if you are struggling with your mental health, you are not alone, and help is out there. Number 37. Gears of War, 2006 According to a very small minority of hardcore console fans, there's no reason to buy an Xbox because Microsoft has no exclusives. The Gears of War series hears that sentiment, and it laughs, because it is one of the best arguments there is for going out right this second and nabbing yourself an Xbox. 
We could have chosen any of the franchise's main entries for this list, but in our opinion, you can't go wrong with the title that started it all. Gears of War is set on the planet Sarah and follows a military squad as they make a last-ditch attempt to end a war against a race of genocidal aliens known as the Locust and save what few humans remain on the planet. I read that in a very upbeat voice, didn't I? It's actually very sad. Back when it was released in 2006, Gears of War received universal critical acclaim. Admittedly, it doesn't bring much new to the third-person shooter table in terms of its gameplay, but everything it tries to do, it does extremely well, resulting in an action-packed space romp that's a fantastically fun way to pass the time. After all, isn't that what we're all here for? As we've already mentioned, the game is a Microsoft exclusive, so if you're lacking a PC or an Xbox, then sadly there's no Gears of War for you. If you do happen to have a PC or an Xbox One, Series X or Series S, then congratulations! You get to revel in all of the shooty-shooty fun times courtesy of the Gears of War Ultimate Edition. Number 36. Doom 2016 the original Doom from 1993 is considered by many to be one of the founding fathers of the modern FPS genre, and for good reason. At the time of its release, it was refreshingly tense and violent. And though by today's standards it looks a little simplistic, it's important to appreciate just how much influence Doom had on many games that have come since. Of course, we recommend giving the OG Doom a bash if you get the chance, if for no other reason than it's a piece of gaming history. But if there's one Doom title that we reckon absolutely everyone should play, it's the 2016 reboot. In the series' triumphant return, players take on the role of an unnamed space marine known as the Doom Slayer and must take out the demonic forces of hell that have been unleashed within an energy mining facility on Mars. In terms of its tone, Doom 2016 was a drastic departure from its predecessor, Doom 3, which took on several elements from the survival horror genre. Here, players can expect an action-packed gore fest from the second they boot up the game, all set to a pounding heavy metal soundtrack. If you like space guns shooting demons in their stupid, stupid faces and getting caught in the rain, then Doom is most certainly the game for you. You can jump into the heavily armoured shoes of the Doom Slayer on pretty much all modern consoles as well as on PC. And by all modern consoles, we obviously mean Xbox One and Series, PS4 and 5, and Switch. Number 35. Quake. 1996. Are you in the market for a dark and gritty first-person shooter with HP Lovecraft vibes and a soundtrack written by Trent Reznor and Nine Inch Nails? Well, first of all, that's really quite a specific ask, but luckily for you, we have just a thing! Quake sees players thrust into a world in which the government has been working on teleportation technology. Naturally, there are beasties out there who are more than happy to exploit this, and so it isn't long before the mysterious Quake connects their own teleportation systems to the human one and begins sending in death squads. You, yes, you, must take on the role of Ranger and fight your way through hordes of monsties in order to collect four magic runes and stop the enemy once and for all. Quake received universal critical acclaim upon its release and sits among the best games of all time. Though its graphics are showing some signs of age, Quake is exciting, action-packed, and thanks to Reznor's spooky soundtrack, downright unnerving in places. Though Quake is over a quarter of a century old, my god, it can still be played on pretty much all modern hardware. In 2021, Bethesda released a remastered version of Quake on Xbox One and Series, PS4 and 5, Switch, and PC, which not only includes the base game, but also a whole bunch of additional content as well. Number 34. Metal Gear Solid 1998 Once upon a time, back before they troubled themselves only with pachinko machines and terrible business decisions, Konami actually made some really good games. Sadly, because of said terrible business decisions, many have been lost to time, but one great title of theirs that you can still snap up is 1998 Metal Gear Solid. The game sees Solid Snake pulled out of retirement in order to neutralize the terrorist threat of Foxhound. Not only does he need to prevent them from launching a nuclear strike, but he must also free the hostages the group has taken. Though Snake is a proven warrior, his strengths lie in stealth, so players will need to strategize carefully, using Snake's many abilities and fancy gadgets in order to ensure that he stays under the radar and out of trouble. When it was released, there were some who called Metal Gear Solid the best game ever made, and regardless of whether you agree with the sentiment, it's impossible to deny that its gameplay and story earn the game a place among the greats. These days, you can only find Metal Gear Solid on PC, and if you're looking for a copy, then you'll need to hit up the good folks at GOG.com as they're the only digital storefront we could find that still carries it. Number 33. Grim Fandango 1998 
The concept of death is both fascinating and terrifying in equal measure, and though no one truly knows what happens when we bite the big one, that hasn't stopped video game developers the world over from exploring what the afterlife might be like. According to Grim Fandango, when we die we go to the land of the dead, the starting point for our journey to the land of eternal rest. Those who have led good lives are rewarded with deluxe transportation, whereas those who have been less than stellar whilst living must make the voyage on foot. The story of Grim Fandango follows Manny, a travel agent working in the Land of the Dead as he attempts to escort a virtuous soul on her journey to the Land of Eternal Rest. Despite being a commercial failure, Grim Fandango received critical acclaim. Audiences and critics alike were impressed by the film noir style of the game, its cast of wacky characters, its challenging yet engaging puzzles, and its sense of humour, which dabbles in both the dark and the light. Grim Fandango received a remaster in 2015, which featured updated graphics and controls. You can find it on Xbox One, Series X slash S, PlayStation 4 and 5, Switch, and PC. Number 32. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate 2018 Do you like the idea of being able to kick the living daylights out of your friends, but your underground illegal fight club got shut down by the police? Mm. Well, perhaps you might want to think about going digital for your ass whooping exploits by picking up a copy of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate on the Nintendo Switch. The fifth installment in the Smash Bros. franchise retains the same basic premise as its predecessors. A handful of colourful characters meet in an arena, and each must use their own arsenal of moves in order to best their opponents. It's fast-paced, chaotic, and if you've got a few mates to play with, it's heaps of fun. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate boasts the biggest roster of characters yet, bringing back all the fighters from the previous games as well as adding several new ones. Players can pick from Nintendo mascots such as Mario, Kirby, and Link, or third-party favourites such as Richter, Belmont, Bayonetta, and Mega Man. The great thing about Ultimate is that it takes everything that its predecessors did right and builds on it with improved gameplay and a larger cast of characters and stages, perfectly balancing innovation with nostalgia. As with the rest of the games in the Smash Bros. franchise, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is a Nintendo exclusive, so if you do have anchoring to beat up your friends, Jigglypuff style, then you'll need to invest in a Nintendo Switch. Number 31. Everybody's Gone to the Rapture 2015 It's not very often that we come across a game that reveals most of its story in its very title, but just because you know where everyone's gone doesn't mean you know why they've gone there, and it's for that reason that you need to play Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. Originally released for the PS4 in 2015, Everybody's Gone to the Rapture is set in an idyllic English village and charges the player with finding out how and why its inhabitants have all disappeared. Exploring the village and interacting with different objects will give players snippets of conversations and events that have previously occurred, and so they'll slowly be able to piece together the puzzle in order to work out just what on earth has happened. Some outlets criticised Everybody's Gone to the Rapture for its lack of interactivity, and in fairness, the title does prioritise its plot over its gameplay, but it's still ranked among many critics' games of the year. The game weaves a beautiful yet heartbreaking story about the end of the world, and immerses players in a stunning environment that's brought to life by a rich cast of characters and fantastic score that suits the gameplay perfectly. If you're ready to unravel the mystery, you can pick up a copy of Everybody's Gone to the Rapture on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and PC. Number 30. Bioshock Infinite 2013 If you followed our earlier suggestion, picked up a copy of Bioshock, and then thought to yourself, I love this, but I wish there were more games like it, then I've got good news for you, friend. There are actually two more games like it. Naturally, we do recommend you play Bioshock 2 as well, but if for whatever reason you're super pressed for time, then the original Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite are the ways to go. Are you sick of the word Bioshock yet? I'm probably going to carry on saying it throughout this entry, so buckle up. Unlike its predecessors, which are both set in the underwater city of Rapture, the majority of Bioshock Infinite takes place in an airborne city called Columbia. The year is 1912, and protagonist Booker DeWitt is sent to the city to rescue a young woman named Elizabeth. It's not long, however, before the pair become embroiled in a vicious conflict between two warring factions, the elite Founders, who rule over Columbia, and the rebel militia Vox Populi. By and large, the gameplay of Infinite is very similar to its predecessors. The game is still a first-person shooter, and although the plasmids are gone, they're replaced with Vigors, which do more or less the same sort of stuff. Upon its release, Bioshock Infinite garnered universal acclaim, with critics particularly praising its setting, visual design, and story, which you will need to pay close attention to because it gets, uh, well, complex. 
In 2016, Bioshock Infinite was remastered and re-released as part of Bioshock the Collection, alongside its predecessors. You can find it on Xbox One, Series X and S, PS4 and 5, Switch, and PC. Number 29. Hades 2020 do you like Greek mythology and also roguelike video games? Admittedly, the Venn diagram isn't that big for those two, but you never know. If you do, then it's almost a dead cert you'll enjoy Hades, the 2020 dungeon crawler from Super Giant Games, not to be confused with Super Massive Games, the studio behind the likes of Until Dawn and the Dark Pictures Anthology series. Those titles are also great, of course, but they're not great enough for this list, at least not in our opinion. Hades' protagonist is not, in fact, the lord of the underworld, but instead his son Zagreus, who spends the entirety of the game trying to escape his father's clutches and join his relatives on Mount Olympus. In terms of Hades' gameplay, players can expect to fight their way through randomly determined rooms, clearing out the enemies and collecting rewards for doing so. If at any point Zagreus' health drops below zero, however, players will have to start from scratch, though they do hang on to some of their upgrades, which should make future runs that little bit easier. Though roguelikes aren't everyone's cup of tea, most critics gave Hades glowing reviews, citing its story, characters, and soundtrack as particular highlights. Hades also won a ton of awards, including two TGAs, two Golden Joysticks, and no less than five BAFTAs. Think you've got what it takes to escape the underworld? You can find Hades on Xbox One and Series, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, Switch, and PC. Number 28. The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker 2002 Oh, come on, you didn't think we were going to choose only one title from the expansive Legend of Zelda back catalogue for this list, did you? After all, pretty much any of the main Zelda titles could have taken up a spot on this list, but in the interest of keeping things diverse, we've whittled our recommendations down to just three. What will be the final one? Well, stay tuned to find out. The Wind Waker is a bit of a departure from what Zelda fans had previously been used to, as for the first time, Link got to try out his sea legs. This game takes place across multiple islands, and it's up to Link to sail the open sea, armed with his trusty magical conductor's baton, the Wind Waker, so that he can gain enough power to take on Ganon and keep him from conquering the world. The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker received universal critical acclaim, earning itself a staggering score of 96 out of 100 on Metacritic. The cel-shaded art style garnered much praise from critics at the time, less so from the players, as did the world design, combat, and puzzles. The Wind Waker was a GameCube exclusive when it released in 2002, but got a fancy HD remaster in 2013. These days, you can only find that game on the Wii U, and with the shop closing imminently, as we've said, time really is of the essence if you're planning on playing it. Fingers crossed it makes its way onto some other store very soon. Number 27. Super Mario World 1990 We've already talked about our favourite 3D Mario adventure, but we reckon a list like this would not be complete without recommending one of the Little Italian Plumber's 2D outings as well. There were loads to choose from, but we decided to go with Super Mario World, a game which was one of the absolute best reasons to own an SNES at the time. Once again, perpetual menace Bowser has kidnapped Princess Peach, only this time he's rather rudely decided to do it while she, Mario, and Luigi are on vacation in Dinosaur Land. Aside from thoroughly spoiling the trio's holiday, his Koopalings have also imprisoned the reptilian residents of Dinosaur Land, so it falls to Mario, Luigi, and for the first time in the series' history, Yoshi, to track down Bowser and save the princess and all of Yoshi's friends. That's quite the to-do list. Not only did Super Mario World garner a huge amount of praise from critics for everything from its gameplay to its visual style, but it also ended up becoming the best-selling SNES game of all time, shifting a whopping 20 million copies. It also happens to be the favourite Mario game of Shigeru Miyamoto, and if anyone is an authority on the best Mario titles, it's probably the man responsible for creating the mustachioed hero. Although it was originally released over 30 years ago, you can still get your hands on a copy of Super Mario World. The game can be purchased for the Wii U, reminder, the Wii U eShop is closing soon, yada yada yada, and it's available to play via the Switch Online subscription. Number 26. Braid 2008 
The classic damsel in distress narrative is a tale as old as time. I mean, literally our last entry had that trope, and that's 30 years old. You know how it goes. The helpless princess gets kidnapped by some evil entity or other, and it's up to the brave warrior to save her. Blah, blah, blah. Boring. Yeah, no offense, Mario and chums. You keep doing you, but we want something fresh. And if you too are looking for a slight twist on the genre, Braid might be just the title for you. The game follows protagonist Tim as he attempts to save a princess from an unspecified monster. Tim's relationship to the princess is, at best, vague, though it's clear that he's made some sort of mistake that he's looking to make amends for. Though on the surface, Braid may seem like little more than your standard puzzle platformer, it actually contains a multifaceted and incredibly well-told story. Additionally, its puzzles are satisfying to solve, its visual design is eye-catching without distracting from the plot or gameplay, and its soundtrack is the cherry on top of an already delicious, if surprisingly flavoured, ice cream sundae. Braid was originally released in 2008 on the Xbox 360, and later made its way to PlayStation 3 and PC. These days, you can find it on the Xbox One and Series X S via backwards compatibility, as well as on PC. According to Braid's designer, Jonathan Blow, an anniversary edition of the game is in the works for modern platforms, but although it was slated for a release in 2021, at the time of writing, there's still no news on a release date. Number 25. Ori and the Will of the Wisps, 2020 These days, it seems like you can't move for Metroidvania titles, or at least games that claim to be Metroidvania titles. But in the sea of mediocrity, there are one or two that stand head and shoulders above the rest. We've already talked about Hollow Knight earlier in this list, but if you're eager for more Metroidvania action, you know, that isn't Metroid or Castlevania, then you can't go far wrong with 2020's Ori and the Will of the Wisps. A direct sequel to 2015's Ori and the Blind Forest, Ori and the Will of the Wisps sees the eponymous guardian spirit separated from his friend Ku during a storm. The gameplay is heavily inspired by titles like Metroid and Rayman, so players can expect to platform their way around the beautiful world, all while collecting items and upgrades which will allow them to unlock previously inaccessible parts of the map. Ori and the Will of the Wisps is nothing short of a masterpiece. Its stunning visual design will have you captivated from the second you load the game, and the masterful platforming, exploration, and combat will keep you hooked for the duration. If you're desperately in need of a little magic and whimsy in your life, then you can find Ori and the Will of the Wisps on Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, Switch, and PC. Number 24. Persona 4 Golden, 2011 to an outsider, the Persona franchise can appear quite confusing. There are a lot of games in the series, oftentimes with different versions, and it can be hard to know where to begin. Well, you really can't go wrong with any of the main series, but there are two in particular that will be our picks for a newcomer, and one of them is Persona 4 Golden. Players take on the role of a high school student who moves to the countryside from the city. During their stay, they become embroiled in a murder mystery and learn to harness the power of summoning personas. Persona 4 was originally released for the PlayStation 2 in 2008, and when it was a huge success, developer and publisher Atlas decided to port the game to one of Sony's handheld devices. They originally planned for it to release on the PSP, but instead opted for the Vita after realizing they would not only be able to put Persona 4 in its entirety, but they'd also be able to add in extra content. As such, Persona 4 Golden comes with additional character Marie, more Personas, new character outfits, and extra cutscenes. Persona 4 was great, but Persona 4 Golden is the definitive way to play. So, ready to unleash your Persona? You can currently find Persona 4 Golden on PlayStation Vita and PC, and it's also slated to release on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Xbox Series, and Nintendo Switch. No PS5 confirmation at time of recording, though. Hmm. Number 23. StarCraft II – Wings of Liberty, 2010 According to the boffins over at NASA, space is really big. The great thing about it being really big is there are probably all manner of creatures and star systems that we may never know about, and it sure is fun to speculate about what might be going on out there. If you'd like to think there's probably some sort of interspecies warfare happening somewhere in our galaxy right now, and you think you'd be great at commanding the troops, then 2010's StarCraft II Wings of Liberty might just be the game for you. 
Wings of Liberty takes place four years after the events of the StarCraft Brood War expansion, by which time the Dominion has become the dominant Terran power in the Caprulu sector. The Dominion aren't exactly the most pleasant governing body, however, and it's up to the rebellious Jim Rayner to lead the charge against the autocratic regime. Viva la resistance! Those of you who are in the market for competent real-time strategy gameplay will find a lot to love in StarCraft 2, and even if you're not a huge fan of RTS, then you probably still get a kick out of the fantastic story and interesting characters. So if you're looking to board the next rocket out of Cape Canaveral so you can go and join the Resistance, then I'm afraid it's bad news if you're a console owner. StarCraft 2 is an exclusive for PC. If you are lucky enough to be part of the PC master race, however, then you'd be pleased to know that StarCraft 2 including the complete Wings of Liberty campaign, is free to play. Number 22. Horizon Forbidden West 2022 There are a lot of large open-world RPGs out there, and sometimes it can be difficult to separate the gems from the bloated wastes of time. If you're looking for a visually stunning RPG that has tons of places to explore and lots of things to do, then we recommend you look no further than 2022's Horizon Forbidden West. The sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn sees protagonist Aloy venturing into the Forbidden West in order to find the source of a plague that is fatal to all those it infects. Along the way, she must also face the deadly machines that roam the landscape, as well as nomadic raiders who are using the machines to their advantage. Though Horizon Zero Dawn was very good, Horizon Forbidden West is arguably better. The sequel takes everything its predecessor did well and makes it bigger and more beautiful. We've seen some glorious open worlds in our time, but few measure up to Forbidden West in terms of scale or visual design. If you're ready to explore the Forbidden West, then you'll have to make sure that that PlayStation 4 or 5 is fired up, as unfortunately for Xbox, Switch, and PC fans, the second Horizon title is a Sony exclusive. Zero Dawn did get a port to PC some three years after its original release though, so Forbidden West might just do the same at some point in the future. Number 21. Castlevania Symphony of the Night 1997 There have admittedly been a number of occasions where we've taken the mick out of Symphony of the Night's protagonist for naming himself Alucard, but although he's rubbish at choosing pseudonyms for himself, it, it's Dracula backwards if you've not noticed, we struggle to hold it against him. After all, he's a pretty fantastic protagonist in a pretty fantastic game, so we're happy to let the ridiculous nickname slide. In terms of the Castlevania timeline, Symphony of the Night takes place a few years after Rondo of Blood, and sees the Dampier Alucard rising from his slumber to explore Dracula's castle and take down his evil father. By the time Symphony of the Night was released in 1997, most video games were in 3D, so the pressure was really on for the game to prove that 2D titles could still be worth playing. Not only did it prove to the world that you don't need three dimensions to be excellent, but many critics agreed that its gameplay, story, and overall design elevated Symphony of the Night above the majority of its peers, 3D or otherwise. These days, Symphony of the Night can be found standalone on the Xbox One and series, or as part of the Castlevania Requiem collection on PS4 and 5, which also comes with Castlevania Rondo of Blood. Number 20, The Sims 3, 2009. Trying to pick a Sims game to put on this list was a real Herculean task, let me tell you. Were we supposed to go for the title that achieved the most from a technical standpoint, or the one that invoked the most feelings of nostalgia? In the end, we went for a combination of both and picked The Sims 3, which brings good, varied gameplay to the table, as well as stirs up fond memories. As with all of the main Sims titles, the aim of the game is to create a Sim, or family of Sims, move them into a home, and ensure that all their needs are met in a timely manner. There's a plethora of design choices, both for your Sims and their dwellings, a bunch of different career paths to pick, and lots of fun ways to murder your Sims once you get sick of them. Drown them, burn them, or simply lock them in a room and starve them. The world really is your oyster. Unlike its predecessors, however, The Sims 3 included a larger world that players could freely wander around, meaning they could visit neighbours and local businesses without having to sit through long, boring load screens. Though The Sims 3 did get ports to the Xbox 360, PS3, Wii and 3DS, it is now only available on PC, which is, in our opinion at least, the best way to play it anyway. Number 19, System Shock 2, 1999. 
I can sense that some of you are filled with rage because we've included both Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite on this list, but have not thus far given a nod to the System Shock series that heavily inspired them. If you are one of those people, then please take a moment to pour yourself a soothing cup of chamomile tea and calm down, because here is System Shock 2. The game takes place aboard the Von Braun spaceship, with players assuming the role of the last remaining soldier who awakens from cryosleep to find that the rest of the crew have been infected with a parasite that has integrated them into the hive mind known as the Many. System Shock 2 combines first-person action with horror and suspense to create a terrifying gameplay experience that will immediately hook players. The first game was great, but the refinement of the gameplay and combat, plus the addition of the role-playing elements, makes System Shock 2 the title that's a must-play. Ever since its launch in 1999, System Shock 2 has been a PC exclusive. An enhanced edition of the game is currently in development, which is set to include a VR mode, though at the time of writing, a release date has not been confirmed. And it's likely that this too will only get a PC release. Sorry console fans, at least you have Bioshock, eh? Number 18, Mortal Kombat 11, 2019. Now we know there are some of you out there who enjoy Mortal Kombat for the story, and that's okay. If you're interested in diving into the insanely complex lore, then you will probably need to start with 1992's Mortal Kombat and work your way forward from there. If you're here what most people are here for, i.e. ensuring that Spines and their owners swiftly part company, then we heartily recommend 2019's Mortal Kombat 11. If you're unfamiliar with the Mortal Kombat series, the gameplay consists of two interdimensional beings, controlled either by two players or a player in a computer, beating the crap out of each other until one of them dies in spectacularly gory fashion. Why do we recommend MK11 over the rest of the games in the series? Is it the intricate narrative or complex well-written characters? In short, no. We recommend it because it has the best graphics, the smoothest controls and the most gruesome fatalities, plus a huge roster of fun Fighters. The game boasts 25 different playable characters, which include old school fan favourites like Scorpion, Shao Kahn and Liu Kang, plus new additions like Cetrion, Geras and Collector. Plus if you're willing to shell out a few dollary dues for the DLC, you can even play as pop culture icons such as John Rambo, the Terminator and the Joker. Ready to back forward, back wide to a flawless victory? You can pick up a copy of Mortal Kombat 11 on most modern consoles. For clarity, or if you haven't been paying attention for the last 80 plus entries, the game is available on Xbox One and Series, PS4 and 5, Switch and PC. Number 17, Shadow of the Colossus, 2018. You might not think it, but Mortal Kombat 11 and Shadow of the Colossus have an awful lot in common. After all, Mortal Kombat has players kicking the crap out of various different fighters, and Shadow of the Colossus kicks the crap out of its players' emotions. See? They're basically the same game. Then are we recommending both, really? Jokes aside, Shadow of the Colossus is an unforgettable gaming experience that will stick in players' minds long after the credits have rolled. The game tells the story of Wanda, a young man on a mission to resurrect the fair maiden, Mono. On his journey, Wanda encounters Dorman, who tells him that he will return Mono's soul to her body if Wanda will slay the 16 colossi that roam the world. Willing to do whatever it takes to revive the young lass, Wanda embarks on a dangerous quest. Aside from the fact that the original Shadow of Colossus was exclusive to PS2 and is therefore rather hard to come by these days, there's a few reasons we recommend playing the remake. Its gameplay and story are basically identical to the 2005 version, but the bonus of playing the remake is that you get nice, shiny updated graphics and a reworked control scheme. Shadow of the Colossus is exclusive to PlayStation, and there's no evidence to suggest that that's likely to change anytime soon. So if you are looking to take on the Colossi, then you'll need a PS4 or 5 in order to do it. Number 16, Katamari Damacy Reroll, 2018. Do you like bright, colourful video games with adorable protagonists and unique gameplay mechanics? Then oh boy, are you going to love Katamari Damacy Reroll, the remaster of 2004's Katamari Damacy. Players assume the role, <laughs> get it? of the prince, a tiny creature whose father, the king of all cosmos, has managed to destroy almost everything in the universe whilst on a drunken bender. Don't worry mate, happens to the best of us. Keen to restore the galaxy to its former glory, the king tasks the prince with collecting matter on Earth, which he must do by utilising the Katamari, which, when rolled, will pick up anything smaller than it. 
Though the gameplay is fairly simple, it's also incredibly addictive. The levels will require players to roll the Katamari over objects in order to grow it to the required size or to pick up certain items, and all within a time limit. With that said, the game never gets repetitive, as the level design is varied enough to keep players entertained as they scramble to collect enough knickknacks in time. Anyone willing to mop up the King of All Cosmos's mighty mess can do so on current generation and previous generation Xbox and PlayStation, as well as Switch and PC. Number 15, DuckTales, 1989. After trying and failing to come up with an adequate rhyme for DuckTales, our writer gave up on writing a short song based on the DuckTales theme tune to open this entry, just making you aware of the pain from which you have been spared. You're welcome. Released all the way back in 1989 for the NES, DuckTales is based upon the Disney TV show of the same name, and follows the adventures of Scrooge McDuck as he travels the world collecting treasure. You know, because he's not already rich enough. Meanwhile, the dastardly Flintheart Glomgold is also on the hunt for the booty, and it's up to Scrooge to beat him to the punch or risk not becoming the world's richest duck. DuckTales features multiple different levels, each of which can be visited in any order, though some require items acquired in others in order to complete them. It's definitely a game that was made with a younger audience in mind, but don't let that put you off, because DuckTales is bright, colourful and lovingly designed. If you're ready to get smacked in the face by a whole load of nostalgia, then you can find DuckTales as part of the Disney Afternoon Collection, which is available on Xbox One, Series X slash S, PS4, PS5 and PC. You can generally pick it up for about the price of a takeaway pizza, and it comes with five other Disney classics, including Chippendale's Rescue Rangers, Tailspin, and Darkwing Duck. Number 14, Cave Story Plus, 2011. If you have any sort of interest in game development, you'll know that a lot of work goes into making your favourite titles. Studios can often consist of tens if not hundreds of people, so it's pretty impressive when an entire game is developed by just a handful of folks, or in the case of Cave Story, one person. The original version can be downloaded free of charge by visiting the game's official website, but although that's great, we would recommend splashing the cash and going for Cave Story Plus, which will give you a whole lot more bang for your buck. The game tells the story of a robot named Quote, who awakens in a cave with amnesia. In order to escape and figure out who he is, he must explore his surroundings and blast his way into new areas to uncover clues. In terms of gameplay, Cave Story has Metroidvania elements, so players can expect a whole load of platforming puzzles and a little backtracking here and there. Cave Story Plus features a number of things the original didn't, including several additional modes from the WiiWare version of the game, a remastered soundtrack and the option to choose either the WiiWare graphic and music, or the classic ones. If spelunking with a robot sounds like your cup of tea, then you can find Cave Story Plus on Nintendo Switch and PC. Number 13, Deus Ex 2000. Long before Cyberpunk 2077 was disappointing gamers en masse, there were a number of great games that gave the world a slightly grim view of how the future might look if cybernetic enhancements became the norm. If that sounds like your idea of a good time, then we highly recommend you check out Deus Ex, the gritty action RPG released in 2000. Deus Ex is set in the year 2052 and paints a frankly horrifying picture of a cyberpunk dystopian world. The game tells the story of J.C. Denton, an agent of the United Nations Anti-Terrorist Coalition who is forced to question everything he knows after learning that the organisation he works for isn't all it's cracked up to be. In fact, it turns out it's responsible for ensuring that only the wealthy are vaccinated against the Grey Death Virus that has cost the lives of millions. Not cool. Deus Ex's major selling point is player choice, as the game allows players to complete missions in any way they see fit, sneak through levels to reach the objective undetected, go for a guns blazing approach, or try to settle things with words. It really is up to you how things play out. If you're interested in experiencing a world ravaged by economic inequality and a deadly plague, then you could just step outside. You'd be better staying indoors, closing the curtains, and playing Deus Ex on PC though. Number 12, Assassin's Creed 2, 2009. We come now to yet another franchise where we found it difficult to pick a favourite. We must give honourable mentions to the original Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed 3, Black Flag and the most recent trio of titles, because they all have a great number of strengths that make them fantastic gaming experiences. If you only have time for one Assassin's Creed game though, we highly recommend picking up a copy of the series' second main outing. Assassin's Creed 2 is the first game in the series to star Ezio Auditore de Firenze, ancestor of modern-day protagonist Desmond Miles. 
The vast majority of the game takes place in the 1400s, as Desmond relives several events in Ezio's life by utilising the Animus, a virtual reality machine that allows users to experience the genetic memories of others. Assassin's Creed 2 received universal critical acclaim upon its release in 2009. Reviewers called out the story as a high point, praising the fact that it tied up the loose ends from the previous game, whilst delivering excitement throughout. There was also a lot of love for the combat, stealth and parkour mechanics, all of which have been improved to the point of near perfection. The original version of Assassin's Creed 2 can be found on PC or on Xbox One and series via backwards compatibility. Alternatively, if you prefer to pick up a shiny remaster, you can find that as part of Assassin's Creed, the Ezio collection on Xbox One and series, PS4 and 5, and Switch. Number 11, Sid Meier's Civilization 4, 2005. Do you feel like, if given the opportunity, you'd be really good at building your own empire? If so, then you might be interested in Sid Meier's Civilization series. We can't put an entire franchise on this list though, that would be cheating, so instead we've picked the series' fourth outing. The aim of Civilization 4 is pretty simple. You, the player, take on the role of a world leader, and it's up to you to conquer the globe in one of several wars. You might be a military tactician stomping on any other nations that stand in your way. If science is your thing, you might try to win the space race. Or perhaps you just want to spread the culture of your fictional country and become the dominant power that way. It may sound straightforward, but actually playing the game is a fine art, and you'll need a cool head on your shoulders if you're going to outwit your opponents. Why play Civ 4 over any of the others? Well, the game takes a turn-based strategy components from its predecessors and improves upon them, with changes made to the combat, diplomacy and great people systems, all of which work in the game's favour. Civ 4 also added in multiplayer, allowing players to compete against their friends for that all-important victory. If you're ready to conquer the world, you can find Sid Meier's Civilization 4 on PC. Those willing to splash out a couple of extra dollary dues can also treat themselves to the complete edition, which comes with the base game, plus the major expansions, Warlords and Beyond the Sword, and the standalone expansion, Colonization. Number 10. Stardew Valley, 2016. You might not have noticed, but we really love video games here at Team Triple Jump. If we had one complaint though, is that they can be super duper violent. Don't get us wrong, sometimes we need a bit of virtual violence to take away from the stresses of daily life, but just occasionally we find ourselves craving a bit of wholesomeness. Enter Stardew Valley, the 2016 farming simulator from Eric Concerned Ape Barone. The game begins with players receiving a letter from their deceased grandfather, which tells them that he's left them a farm, and they're welcome to take it over whenever modern life becomes too stressful. The farm is on the outskirts of a small town called Stardew Valley, and oh boy does it need a lot of work! The gameplay starts out quite straightforward, but can become as complex as you'd like. Begin by tilling the land and sowing a few seeds, and once they've grown, you can sell them to Pierre for a tidy profit. As you become more accomplished, you can raise animals, make jam, and even produce your own wine, all to add to that all-important bank balance. Players can also befriend locals, get married, and contribute to the community center to help kick that no-good Jojo Mart out of town. Do you feel like a life on the farm is exactly what you're looking for? You can pick up a copy of Stardew Valley on Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4 and 5, Vita, Switch, and PC. Number 9. Animal Crossing New Horizons 2020 we're sticking with the wholesome stuff for the time being as we take a look at Animal Crossing New Horizons, a title that allowed players to escape to their very own desert island to live alongside a bunch of friendly critters. Upon landing in the tropical paradise, players are greeted by Tom Nook, who introduces them to their new dwellings before quickly demanding some moolah to pay for it all. Not to worry though, there are plenty of ways to make money. Plant fruit trees, fish for rare specimens, or if you're serious about paying off that greedy raccoon, try your luck on the stork market, buying and selling turnips for bags of cash. Just don't do what our writer did and spend 500,000 bells on turnips, then put them in your basement and forget about them so that later you come back to a giant room full of rotten veg. The smell was unimaginable. Not only is Animal Crossing New Horizons a cheery and relaxing break from the stresses of the world, but for many, it was a beacon of light during an awful time. The game was released in March 2020, just as many of us were going into lockdown. Players might not have been able to visit their friends and family members, but they could pop over to their islands to hang out virtually, giving many people some much-needed distraction and social interaction during that awful time. If you're ready to sack off society and move to your very own tropical paradise, then you can find Animal Crossing New Horizons exclusively on the Switch. Number 8. Persona 5 Royal 2019 We promised you more Persona and we're not ones to go back on our word, so here it is. 
The great news is that you needn't have played any of the previous titles in the Persona series in order to thoroughly enjoy the experience of Persona 5 Royal. Except Persona 4 Golden, of course, but that's less to do with understanding the plot of Persona 5 and more because we've told you to. As you know, we are in charge, and you must do, as we say. The game is set in Tokyo and follows a high school student as he transfers to a new school after being wrongly accused of assault. Soon after his arrival, he and several other students discover that they are able to embrace the power of their personas and form a vigilante gang known as the Phantom Thieves of Hearts. From there, they explore the metaverse and attempt to steal any malevolent intent from the hearts of horrible adults. Like Persona 3 and Persona 4 before it, Persona 5 received an enhanced release a few years after its initial one, and in our opinion, it's the best way to experience the game. Persona 5 Royal not only comes with all of Persona 5's content, but it also features an additional party member, a new area of the city to explore, an entire extra playable semester, and much, much more. Think you're ready to steal some hearts, and not in the way that myself, Ashton, and Peter do? If so, then you can find Persona 5 Royal on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. Number 7. L.A. Noire 2011 Do you like crime? Or, or rather, do you like the idea of solving crimes? I don't mean... Mind, then by golly are you going to have a great time with L.A. Noir, the gritty cop adventure from Team Bondi and Rockstar Games. Players jump into the well-shined shoes of Cole Phelps, a World War II veteran turned LAPD officer with big ambitions and an even bigger attitude problem. Cole's cases are presented as different chapters of the game, and players must gather evidence, both by looking for clues and questioning witnesses, in order to make an arrest. Not everything is black and white, though. Sometimes the obvious suspect isn't the guilty party, and Cole will soon find that his morals are tested just as much as his crime-solving prowess. L.A. Noire received critical acclaim when it was released in 2011. Reviewers were impressed by a number of aspects of the game, including the story, the voice acting and mocap, and the open world, which was a recreation of Los Angeles in the 1940s. Think you've got what it takes to crack the case? You can find the original version of L.A. Noir on PC. If you prefer to grab yourself a copy of the shiny remastered version, you can do so on Xbox One and Series, PS4 and 5, and Switch. Number 6. Heavy Rain 2010 We've spent an awful lot of time making fun of Heavy Rain on this channel, and sure, the voice acting is a bit wobbly in places, people's behaviour is kind of odd from time to time, and there's that glitch. No! But if you can look beyond all those things, you'll find a game that is really worth your time. Heavy Rain focuses on sad dad Ethan Mars, who's been having a pretty rough time of it since his eldest son was killed in a road traffic accident and his marriage fell apart. Things are about to get far worse for the unfortunate father, though, as his other son, Sean, Sean, is taken by the infamous Origami Killer, a serial murderer who kidnaps children in order to test their father's love. To get his son back, Ethan will need to participate in a number of trials, each more chilling than the last. Throughout the game, players control one of four characters. Unlucky Pop, Ethan Mars, criminal profiler, Norman Jaden, FBI, journalist, Madison Page, and private investigator, Scott Shelby. As they progress through the story, their actions can impact the overall outcome, and there are 17 different endings that can be achieved in total. I sure hope you've got those thumbs ready, you're gonna need them to press X to Sean a lot. Heavy Rain was originally released as a PlayStation 3 exclusive, but has since been remastered and can now be found on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and PC. Number 5. Uncharted 4 A Thief's End 2016 if you're anything like us, then you'll agree that just one slice of the delicious and slightly cheeky pie that is Nathan Drake simply is not enough. You deserve a second helping, my friend. So pull up a chair and spoon yourself out another dollop of Uncharted, though this time might we recommend Uncharted 4, perhaps? Set some 15 years after the events of Drake's deception, A Thief's End sees Nathan Drake enjoying his retirement by taking up gardening. Oh, who am I kidding? Yes, he's retired, but the man can't stand it, and it takes little more than a slight nudge from his brother Sam to get him back into the treasure hunting and ancient city destroying game. After spending several years in jail, Sam has been able to escape alongside drug lord Hector Alcazar, who now demands that Sam finds the treasure of Henry Avery if he wants to keep on breathing. Always game for an adventure, Nathan signs himself up to help straight away. 
Uncharted 4 cleverly combines action-packed gameplay with a nuanced narrative, in a way that allows both to have their moment in the spotlight. The action never takes away from the story, but nor does the plot tread on the toes of the gameplay. Nathan Drake's fourth major outing was released as a PS4 exclusive and is currently available only to those who have a Sony console. Don't despair if you don't have a PlayStation though, as the Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection, which contains a remastered version of the game, has already released on PS5 and is set to launch on PC at some point in 2022. Number 4. Halo 3 2007 Following its release in November 2004, there were some who were a little disappointed with Halo 2's single-player campaign. The multiplayer was solid, and there was a lot of love for the audio-visual presentation, but the single-player mode was short and divided fans by concluding on a cliffhanger. Thankfully, much of that was forgiven when Halo 3 released in 2007. The plot of Halo 3 once again follows Master Chief as he and his comrades do their darndest to put a stop to the plans of the Covenant, a theocratic collection of alien races that threatens the galaxy. This time, the Covenant leader, the High Prophet of Truth, has set his sights on the Ark, an immense structure that has the ability to fire all of the Halos at once. And if you've been paying attention to the series thus far, you'll know that's pretty bad for business. Upon its release, Halo 3 received widespread critical acclaim, with reviewers lauding it for retaining the Halo formula that worked so well in previous games, while still delivering a fresh experience thanks to its exciting story and the addition of new weapons and vehicles. Like all of the Halo games that have come before and since, Halo 3 is a Microsoft exclusive. These days you can find a remastered version as part of the Master Chief Collection, available on Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. Number 3. Portal 2 2011 If you've been putting off playing Portal 2 because you think it's going to be more of the same, then I'm here to tell you that, well, um, well, it kind of is. But, but wait, don't go! A lot of Portal 2's mechanics are very similar to its predecessor, but it does have additional ones, and it brings a brand new story and characters to the table. Plus, why wouldn't you want more Portal gun action in your life? I know I do! The game begins with Chell waking up once again in the Aperture Science Enrichment Centre, guided by personality core Wheatley, who happens to be voiced by the fantastic Stephen Merchant. Chell must utilise the Aperture Science handheld portal device, along with various lasers, tractor beams, and light bridges to escape the facility. Not only do Portal 2 players get another single-player campaign with tons of puzzles to solve, but they get a multiplayer experience as well, which allows them to buddy up with a friend to solve even more brain teasers co-op style. Like its predecessor, Portal 2 is superbly written, incredibly well voice acted, and is built on a solid foundation of puzzles that are challenging enough to keep players hooked, but not so difficult that they'll rage quit. If one dose of Portal isn't enough and you must have more, then you can find Portal 2 on Xbox One and series via backwards compatibility, as well as on PC. The game is now also available on Switch as part of the Portal Companion Collection. Number 2. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2017 I just know you've been waiting with bated breath to find out which of the many brilliant Zelda titles would be our final pick from the series, and I think you'll agree, we've made a good choice. Breath of the Wild is the first open world title in the modern Legend of Zelda series, and oh boy, did Nintendo deliver the goods. Players once again join everyone's favourite Peter Pan look-alike Link as he travels across Hyrule in order to restore his memories and defeat Big Bad Ganon. Only this time, he's going by the name Calamity Ganon. Ooh, edgy. Unlike most previous Zelda titles, Breath of the Wild doesn't give players much in the way of direction, as the focus is squarely on exploration. There is a main quest line, of course, but the game doesn't railroad players into picking it up immediately, and instead encourages them to wander the huge landscape to see what secrets they can uncover. Critics had nothing but praise for the game, with some going as far to call Breath of the Wild a masterpiece, and it's easy to see why. The humongous open world is nothing short of stunning, drawing players in with scores of magical things things that are just waiting to be explored. Are you ready to get out there and collect all 900 Korok seeds? Like the vast majority of Zelda titles before, Breath of the Wild is a Nintendo exclusive, so you can only find it on the Wii U and Switch. Now, just a quick note before we get to our number one entry. We're very grateful that you've stuck with us for this whole list, and we want to remind you that these entries are in no particular order, so please don't come for us in the comments if your favourite game isn't in pole position. All of these games mean something special to at least one of the members of our team, and we hope, after playing them, they'll mean something special to you too. Now, with that all out of the way, number one. Project Makeover 2020 
Now I know we said these games were in no particular order, but Project Makeover is undoubtedly number one in the hearts of everyone here at Team Dribble Jump. The game was released in 2020 and sees players matching tiles and giving makeovers to a whole bunch of people that are in need of a little TLC. Stop, uh stop it, stop that. No, no, we can't allow this to go any longer. Can we cut to the real number one, please? Jesus Christ. Number one, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, 2011. Oh, come on, you didn't really think we'd forget about Skyrim, did you? After all, it's not like Todd Howard's going to let us anytime soon. Set in Tamriel's northernmost province, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim sees players taking on the role of the Dragonborn, an individual whose purpose it is to defeat Alduin, a dragon whom prophecy dictates will eventually destroy the world. If you think it's just a case of toddling off to fight a big lizard so you can be home in time for supper, then you're going to be severely disappointed, as it's very easy to play dozens of hours of Skyrim and hardly touch the main questline. Sure, you could just go straight for the dragon and ignore everything else, but why would you when you can become a master thief or a mysterious assassin? There's a whole world full of quests, secrets, and random encounters to uncover, and there's little wonder that many players have sunk thousands of hours into the game. Skyrim is considered by many to be one of the greatest games of all time, and for good reason. The role-playing elements of the title are flawlessly executed, the world is massive without feeling bloated, and each quest is well written and filled to the brim with interesting enemies and NPCs. At this point, it would probably be quicker to list the devices that you can't play Skyrim on. But for the sake of clarity, the game is available on Xbox One, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Switch, and of course, PC. Ugh, that was a lot of games. I think we're gonna go lie down for a bit now. I'm tired.